Welcome and good evening wrestling fans to the 2024 NCAA Division II Wrestling Championships located here at Hartman Arena, just about 15 miles north of Wichita, Kansas. Tonight we have some action-packed loaded bouts here for the finals for this beautiful St. Patrick's Day weekend. Again, it's a great weekend wrestling fans, St. Patrick's Day and wrestling at the same time. It doesn't get much better than that. I'm your host, Cy Wayne, right here joined with my co-host, Josh Portillo. Josh, what match are you most excited for tonight? Yeah, so one match that really sticks out is going to be the 133-pound match. We've got returning national champion Gavin Kiocho for Glenville State. He was their first ever national champion. He's going to go up against Gabe Hixenbaugh for Monte Valo. Now, he's been a lot of firsts for that program already as well. It's a first-year program but he's their first national qualifier, their first All-American, and he could very well be the, their first national champion tonight. Yeah, that's exciting stuff. I had a chance to talk with Daniel Owen, be their head coach, and Michael Land beforehand. And, you know, Gabe was a Division One transfer, top 20 guy from Campbell University up there with Scotty Sintez and Kerry Colot product. So, I mean, it's exciting to see those guys make that transition to this level and have instantaneous success. We, have, we see that a lot with a lot of different people, especially at this level. But let's talk about the 125-pound match since it's coming up next here. We have Christian Meha, Elkhart, Indiana product, fifth-year senior, was the three-seed here in this tournament, had a great first couple bouts, one of a tie, sudden tiebreaker there in the quarterfinals against uh, Nebraska Kearney, and then obviously in the semifinals against Corrigan from Wisconsin Parkside. So again, we're excited to see him. And what about, tell us about the green corner. Yeah, so in the green corner, we've got Jackson Roman, he was a national finalist last year for Augustana, and he had arguably one of the biggest upsets in, of the tournament last year. He took out two-time national champion Cole Lea of West Liberty. So uh, he's back in the national finals again, and I'm sure he's going to be coming for that national title. Yeah, and his semifinal match today was exciting. I mean, he, he took uh, J Joplin from Lander, the sudden victory there, and was taking shots, being really relentless on the offensive attacks there. And uh, a stall call, man. I mean, you know, you hate to lose that type of bout, but sometimes those things do happen. And, uh, you know, three or four shots there in that two-minute sudden victory period. Rothman got awarded the stall call and ended up winning the point by a, a penalty violation. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Roman is definitely a shooter. That's his style, attack, attack, attack. And, uh, you know, you can argue Joplin is just defending, but when Roman shoots off 50 attacks, then, uh, you know, it's going to be easy for Joplin to get caught for stalling. And Meha, on the other hand, He's super slick with his counter offense, so uh, I'm curious to see how this is going to play out matchup-wise because Roman's going to be shooting a lot, but Mieha has some really good counter offense. For sure, and, you know, I always like to point out, you're a 125-pounder. I'm a former heavyweight. You know, here we are at 7 o'clock, uh, two days after the tournament. Weight cutting is over. What do you think these guys are going to walk out here tonight weighing? Uh, I, I can say an average is maybe like 140, but... Uh, I don't want to call people out, but there were some All-Americans in my weight class that said they were up to 150 wow. by the time that the uh, All-American parade happened. Wow. And I don't know if he's exaggerating, but uh, they're definitely probably excited to put on some weight after this. Oh, for sure. I guarantee you they probably have themselves a Snicker bars or two, maybe a Coke. And, you know, these guys tonight have been in and something delicious to eat as well. Yeah, hey, I say they deserve, you know, a little snack anyways. You know, it's it's uh, been a long season, and... Uh, yeah, you know, they deserve something regardless of uh, how they what, what would be your post-championship meal if you had something you wanted to eat? Mm, I was a big ice cream guy. Okay. I didn't really like it during the season because I feel like I couldn't compete good. But, yeah, ice cream was my thing. Sure. Awesome, man. How about well, you? Uh, I would probably have to say chicken wings. I'm, I'm a lifetime heavyweight. Healthy or subconscious by any means. And here we are coming out, Christian Meha here in the red corner. Like I said earlier, fifth-year senior, Elkhart, Indiana product. I mean, this guy has been on the national stage for as long as I can remember and uh, has had a lot of success. He's a multiple-time All-American. Um, Coach Kiskin and, and the University of McHenry have done a fantastic job developing and turning this program and that transition from NAIA to the Division II level. And here they are today, potentially going to take home a team trophy. Definitely. I'm excited for this one again. Uh Neha uh, is really strong with this counter offense, and that's how he won his semifinals match when he pinched Shane Corrigan in the semifinals. And here comes the green corner here. Jackson Rothman, uh, Trinart Minnesota product, coached by Jason Redmeyer, coming out here walking confidently. You know, on the way in, you see Augustana brought a very big conglomerate of people over there in that southwest corner here, Hartman Arena. And uh, they've been out tailgating all day. I saw they were having pancakes and sausages, and they have a, like, 
200 people out there, so they're going to be excited being close to home and have a chance to bring home a national championship at 125 pounds. Yeah, Augustana always has a really loud and rambunctious crowd. You know, I, we dueled against them. Nebraska Kearney dueled against Augustana a lot. And I'll say it wasn't a very fun place to duel just because their crowd gets so into it. Sure. Well, here we are getting ready to start off here. Both of our officials here look like they're ready to rock and roll here. There are some mics down on the mat, so you'll get some mat side feedback. People pay attention at home on NCAA.com and on Flow Wrestling. Here we go. It's going to be a great night of wrestling. Both guys are getting their anklets on here. The officials are making sure they got the names correct. And all of the head table workers are ready to rock and roll. Yep, the athletes are strapping on the ankle bands. Just about ready for war. I'm excited for this one. These are the 25 pounders. They're like the spark plugs of Doom you know that. Oh, yeah. Lightweights are fun to watch. Let's hope they open it up and we get some good action here. Here we go. Nice little leg attack attempt there, front headlock here by Meha. Meha really needs to snap him down to the mat, get pressure on that back, and get that hand down there to make it tough for Rothman to recover. Yep, I feel like we're going to see a lot of exchanges like this. Again, like I said, Roman's a, a shooter, but Neha's really good at catching front head and his counters. And they, both of these guys are a, a very large 125 counters. I mean, they're long, they're linky, they're, they're lean and strong. It's going to be exciting to see when they're feeling healthy right now and not an hour or two after weigh-in to see what they can do. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, Christian Neha, he started his career at 133 his first two years. He did have a really tough teammate at 125, Marcus Pavlik. So you ever see Roman in on a shot again, but not super deep. They're in that 50 50 position over under. So nothing coming from it. It's like they're feeling each other out, you know? Heads are down, they're in a ear to ear tie here, obviously. And, oh, nice leg attack attempt by Robin's got his now hands he's got a and Back to that 50 50. So already it's about four shots to none to Roman. But yeah, it's taking him to the edge right here. But they're gonna center back up anyway. Jackson's the uh, first NCAA finest at 125 pounds um, since 2014 for Augustana. The last one was TJ North, and before that was uh, Al Miter um, from Awutana, Minnesota. Or Al Meager, my apologies. My handwriting's terrible. At the Super Regional Tournament, Jackson Roman actually got second, losing to Shane Corrigan in the finals. And Neha, that's who Neha just beat in the semifinals. And here we go again, just like we saw in the semis. It's stop call here. Jackson is relentless on those offensive attacks. Very long, very strong, and he has a high percentage of finishing if he can get his hands long. Yep, I had a feeling it might play out like that. Again, Roman, he's an attack machine, so he just keeps firing him off. But Neha is going to look for his opportunity, and he can definitely sneak out a takedown here himself. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, Neha's really got to get on the counter offense here, look for an outside single or a reattack there, because Jackson's going to keep coming straight and trying to shoot that head inside single there to what would be our left or Neha's right leg. 30 seconds here left in the first period. Nice fake there by Rothman. Fifteen seconds here. Another shot by Jackson. He's got his hands locked here. He's driving up to his feet. He needs to sit him down here. Run the pipe or double off. Bars of guard maybe. Nope, went back to the mat. Mayhaw's got a shin whizzer here. He's short trying to have short time. We're going to get here. And that's going to be the period, folks. A lot of late action there. Yeah, but Mayhaw with that stingy defense. Roman did a good job of getting that leg up in the air. Mayhaw's going to be really hard to finish on the ground. For sure. And you, you can tell there, you wish they would have shot that, uh, you know, maybe uh, 20 or 30 seconds into the match. We could have had a whole flurry there for three minutes. Yeah, exactly. I feel like he kind of had to rush a little bit on the finish, so couldn't quite get the finish, but Neha's going to start bottom here in the second period. Jackson's tough on top here, pulling him down here. Looks like he's going to a little short half and a, a thigh pride there. A roll attempt by Meha, and he's able to change over and get to his feet. Yeah, that was interesting. Neha was really patient, and he looked relaxed and didn't rush things, and then he hit that little sit-out right there, and Got his escape. 
For those of you who've been watching at home, the number one and number two seeds, not ni nice leg attack here by Christian. He's a low single leg attack here. Oh, he's on a leg attack. Oh, he's got to step over. He's, gonna, he's got to pop his head. He's going to get the finish yep. here. Wow. So there it is, Christian Meha. A little bit of a counter attack. He's going to go up 4-0. to zero. Well, You said it earlier. The way he was going to win this bout was with the counter offense, and there it was. But both ones and two seeds at this weight lost earlier. Joplin of Lander got beaten the semis by Jackson, and Meha beat Corrigan from Wisconsin Parkside in the semis. So it's exciting to see some underdogs play out very well here at this 2024 NCAA Championships. Up to our feet here in one point escape. About 50 seconds left here, and Meha does have a stall warning, even though he is up 4 1. It's interesting to see how Jackson uses this to his advantage. In a situation will be huge for Jackson to sneak out a takedown with short time here, moving he things up. Nice recover there. He's looking to chase an ankle. You can tell by Meha's face. He's looking left and right. And again, he's comfortable here. Those are positions that he's finding. 28 seconds here, 17 seconds advantage time for Christian. Fifteen. Jackson's moving forward. Mayha's kind of sidestepping a little bit. But I mean he does have the lead, so doesn't need to do it now. There's that second stall call we talked about. And Mayha still almost snuck out that counter right there. I know. He's looking to snag an ankle, and that's how he got that first takedown. If you're Augustana here, Jackson's choice. You pick top, bottom, or neutral? Yeah. He's gonna he's gonna go bottom. Let's see this takedown again. Yeah, great outside single. He shelves it. Kind of comes the middle there. Jackson takes down, comes right up to his feet. Mayha goes clock, crotch lift. Right to a Turk, too. Yes, he does. That's going to at least eat, eat a little bit of clock here. Roman's going to want to try to crawl forward and get his knee through, and there he does it. Now he's going to want to try to get his hips up. He's getting that wing there on the left side. Short half on the right. Quad pod there by Jackson. He's coming up to his feet, trying to stay on. Doesn't want to get pulled out. 47 seconds here of riding time. Just about a minute now. So resting on the edge here, and they're going to go out of bounds. So a minute 20 on the clock. And Meha is three seconds away from having riding time. So if he gets that riding time over a minute and it sticks at the end of the match, it's going to be an extra point. Coach Kiskin over there telling Christian to keep him down. Offense up. He hits a switch. Nice transition there by Christian. And Neha's riding tough right now. He might just try to ride him out the rest of the period for the national title. Got one minute here. Something big's got to happen if you're Jackson here on bottom. And he's got him flattened out. Neha was a fifth place All-American, and then he failed to place the next year, and then he was fifth last year. This year he's looking for the national title if he can keep this ride out. 45 seconds here. He is doing a fantastic job in the top position. Staying in bounds right now, keeping those feet in. Yeah, and so there's 30 seconds here. If you're Roman, you need to get a new start here. You almost want to tell him to crawl out here, even though it's not advised for potentially fleeing the match. You almost but have to. Yeah, you have to. I mean, he's there he goes. Now, 22 seconds here. We got a flurry. All right, here we go. 22 seconds. Coach Brett Myers telling him to dig deep here. 20 seconds. Go big move here. Let's see what Jackson's got here with 22 seconds left here in this 125-pound weight class. One good breakdown from Mieha is all it could take. Let's see what their first moves are. Tries a switch. Decent chop there. And, and Mieha chops him forward. There's 15 seconds left, and he's got him flattened out. And the McKinney coaches are excited over there. Oh, yeah, excited you see him And that's going to be it at 125 pounds. Your 2024 NCAA champion is Christian Meha of McKendry University. Holy cow, Christian Meha gets it done. What a great match to start this first of 10 bouts tonight here in Park City, Kansas. Super fun match. It looked like it was Roman kind of dictating the pace from the beginning, but Meha got that counter takedown and that tough ride at the end.
Christian Meja, national champion. All right, so let's talk about this replay again. It was uh, Jackson Roman taking a lot of the shots early. There's another shot from Roman. Meja did get called for stalling early and gave up a couple stall points, but this counter takedown here is what really separated the match here. And then his ride out in the third period, I mean, uh, the ride out is what did it for him because Roman's dangerous and neutral. Fifth twice in the past four years of Senior. Talk about what this 2024 NCAA championship means to you. Thank you, thank you, yeah. I mean, it was about time I got this thing done after six years, you know. But I'm just grateful and blessed. You know, I just want to thank God. Yeah. I'm just Quick. Congratulations. Now, talk about what's your biggest inspiration? What led you to this point? What got you in the sport of wrestling? Uh, well, just growing up, middle school, one of my best friends got me into wrestling. My brother, he was, he got me into it a little bit too. So I just, I've abandoned all this course to pursue wrestling. And I'm super grateful. Well, thank you, Christian. Congratulations on your 2024 NCAA championship from McKendree University. Alrighty, so up next at 133, we're gonna have Gabe Hixenbaugh of Monte Valo taking on Gavin Kiocho of Glenville State. Welcome back. Here we are at the 133-pound weight class where we have Gabe Hickson Ball of Montevallo University coming out of the red corner there. Coached by Michael Land and Daniel Owenby. It's going to be an exciting match. We talked about this one in the, in the prelude a little bit prior to our first battle of the night. And then talk about the green corner. Yeah, so in the green corner, we've got Gavin Kiocho of Glenville State. He's the returning national champion at 133. So he's coming for title number two. He was Glenville State's first ever national champion. And now he's trying to be their first ever two-time national champion. Yeah, I'll tell you what, this is a bout that we're both excited for. They wrestled Midwest Classic. I want to say it was a two or three point bout, 6-4, 7-4. I was there in person and I can't remember it off the top of my head, 4-2. But uh, you're talking about two guys here who stay in great position that really try to work guys out of position. Hicks and Baugh is a hammer on top. Kiocho makes tons of things happen by his ability just to wrestle through positions. Yeah, 100%, and I think they both have some, uh, they're, they're both really hard to score on, too, so uh, I'm curious who's going to be able to break through and get the takedowns here. Yeah, and this isn't Kyoto's first time we talked about earlier, and last year he had a barn burner of a tournament coming in the sixth seed, I believe, in 2023, and then working his way to the finals, and he's out there ready to shake hands and get this thing started. Yeah, he's been ready for a minute. He's ready to get the show started. I think it's a new version of Tony Ramos' stare down. Yeah, you just stand there and stick your hand out. If Montevallo wins this match, this will be the first national championship in their school's history in any sport. So it's an exciting time for the Purple and Gold Falcons. As you can see here, Kyocho is like a, a firework. He's explosive. He's trying to pick up the pace and create opportunity and cause chaos, it looks like. Yeah, so, I mean, both of these guys are already history makers. Like, that's something that's pretty cool, and they're both still not done yet. But again, Kyocho, first ever national champ for Glenville State. Gabe Hixenbaugh, first ever All-American for their, for Montevallo. Did you get a chance to watch the semifinal 
with yeah. Hickson Ball. He's got that takedown there with .10 seconds left on the clock. Oh, yeah. I was commentating that match, too, and it was a barn burner. It was very back and forth, but uh, Hickson Ball was actually on bottom with about 10 seconds left. Got a quick escape and snuck out a takedown with your right about half a second left. It was pretty much as close as could be, but I do think it was in time, and yeah, pretty cool way to make the national finals. From my personal experience, I would not want it that close. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, uh, you know, he never stopped wrestling and got it done. So about a minute in, and both the wrestlers are still kind of feeling each other out. Two different styles here. You got one guy, like I said, fast, quick, and explosive, and, and Gabe's slow, methodical with control. Nice single there. He's got his feet off the ground. He's trying to knee slide. Looks like he's going to Iranian or back door here, and Kyocho's doing a great job of trapping the ankles. Let's see if Hicksonbaugh tries to isolate one leg or what his plan is here. Kyocho looks pretty comfortable. He looks like he wants a stalemate. Tying them both up here, not really that. Now he got a foot free. He might be able to turn it. Watch the leg pass. Wait on that front foot there if I'm Hicksonbaugh. Maybe look for a cradle here if he can get his hands around, but he's not very long. Watch that knee there. Yeah, Kyocho's being stingy here, so no takedown. Dargy hit some ball was close there, but no takedown. That single leg is kind of a Hickson ball trademark leg attack. Yeah, he, he got to it a lot against uh, Barnhart in the semis as well. And I cover a lot of super NCAA Super Region 2 wrestling, and so I've seen him wrestle a significant amount this season, and I've seen him do that countless times. 125 pound of all Americans, please report to the chairs of honor. 125 Recap both their battles to get here this this 2020. Back to that single again. He's back to it. Let's see if he can get the finish this time. Doing a great job. He sits the corner. Oh, you got a grand beat. Nothing Nobody action yet. time. Three point take down there for Hicks and Baugh. There it is. Just about 30 seconds left in the first. If you can get a ride out here, it would be huge. And conversely, coach has got to get one here. He's trapping that arm. He's got a nice tight waist there. Looks like he might just try to get a quick set here. So period's going to end 3-0. to zero. Hicks and Ball in the lead over returning champion Kyocho. Looks like it's going to be Green's choice, and he looks over to Dylan Cottrell in the corner, and Coach Cottrell tells him to go down. So yeah, that takedown was huge. I mean, Kyocho tried to roll out of it, but Hicksonball followed really well, and now he's got a three-point lead heading into the second period of action here. And we talked about it briefly. That single, that's his trademark takedown. 100%. Nice stand up there by Kyocho. And he lets him go here, riding time, 38 seconds. We talked a little bit about Hicks and Boss semifinals. Kyocho had Echeverria from Gannon, who upset the two and the seven seed to get there. A guy who basically was out to upset people, but Kyocho did a great job of putting that to rest. Yeah, definitely. I anticipated a semifinals match that was the national finals last year between Kyocho and Quinn Campbell from Shadron State. But again, Echeverria had that upset in the first round, and Kyocho ended up scoring a 9 0 major over Echeverria to make the finals here tonight. Hicks and Ball is an Alabaster, Alabama native. And uh, Kyocho is Parkersburg, West Virginia, Parkersburg South High School. So a minute left here in the second. We're about halfway through the match. Hicks and Ball going to grab a two-on-one here. He's trying to re-rush, and it looks like there. Kyocho is trying to circle and get his head in a good position. Here they are still fighting wrist control, fighting head position, inside ties. Coach LB tell him to push pull. 30 seconds here left in the period. Level change attempt there by Kyocho. Nice 360 attempt. He's trying. Yeah, I've seen Kyocho hit that 360 before, and it's pretty slick. If you're Hickson Ball here, going to third period, your choice. What are you taking? Kyocho can be pretty good on top, and uh, when he gets the legs in, he's very dangerous, but I almost feel like bottom's a good choice here. 
I think so too, given his compact size and nature. And and, and, and I really haven't seen Hicksonbach get rode out a lot this year. I think uh, it, I mean, it would be a tough, tall task, not impossible for Kyocho, but I think it's something that uh, he has to be wary of taking the down position here in the third period. All right, one period of action left here in the 133 pound national finals. And Hicksonbach is going to get a quick escape here. So he's going to increase his lead to four to one. Judging by the score, it looks almost identical to the Midwest Classic bout we talked about earlier, 4 2. Kyocho's really got to put two shots together. Gabe's defense, his head hand defense, is pretty solid, and he's not able to clear that head or hands. So, I mean, he's really got to get him to step and react in order to get to a leg attack. Yeah, it looks like he's picking up his fakes and his, his half attacks. Trying to feel something here. But we're nearing on, on just about a minute left here, so he's going to have to get something going. Another leg attack attempt by, Don by Hicksonbaugh there. Back to that single. One minute left here. And Hicksonbaugh gets behind here. Whoa, well, no, I think we're still in. I, I, I'm wow. not going to lie to you. They were in the cylinder. I don't know what you saw, Josh, but it looked like if, yeah, he's going to throw the brick, and I don't blame Coach O&B. Yeah, I'm thinking I saw the same thing. We got a pretty good angle right here, but maybe the refs saw them slide out for maybe half a second, but we're going to we're gonna get a look at the replay here and see what's going on. I'm, I'm not normally going to disagree with replay, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we're right here. If you can see on the mat, he's still in, he's still in. Oh, Ooh, it's, it's so close. It is. I, it looks like a hair follicle. I can't see the referee's left leg's in the way. It's, it's kind of difficult to see, but we're going to go back to the table here. They're going to look it over with our independent reviewer in the back. Yeah, let's see that again. This could ice the match for Hicks and Bob. Oh, this ref might be in the way, too. Oh, he did pop. Oh, I couldn't really tell by the hair. The they refs the might hair. have some good eyes here, actually. We might have been wrong. Well, thank God they have two of them, right? Yeah. And, you know, they're taking a look at it, so. They're on the telephone right now uh, doing the review process. You can see in the bottom of your screen. For those of you at home, uh, the NCAA has what we call an independent reviewer, a third-party reviewer, where they have a, historically a um, retired official or um, an evaluator in the back who can basically watch them from different angles. For those of you watching at home on Flow and NCAA.com, and so they're trying to make sure the angles in the back are going to be a little bit better than what we have here on the stream and at the head table. So still conversing here at the table. It'll be interesting to see here because usually when these, oh, we have, it looks like we have a decision here. All right, let's see what's shaking. No takedown. Wow. Okay. Well, we were wrong for those of you watching at home. The officials were spot on. Yeah, I mean, you got to think it's tough to tell in the moment, too. I mean, at home, you can kind of rewind it, slow it down a little bit, but tough to tell in the moment. I don't think the Montevallo coaches were crazy for trying to challenge that. You got one qualifier here, and you have been saving that for, for everything possible, so I don't blame them either for saving it for an opportunity like that. Both guys got a little breather here, 30-second flurry coming. Back to that 2 on one rushing here, fighting head position and circling and driving in. Kyocho 360 earlier. We're going to see how he clears that of that if he, doesn't, if he ties him up again. Kyocho's progressing forward here. Hicks and Boss. That head hand defense is impeccable. All right, we got short time here, 10 seconds. Hicks and Boss looks like he's going to take out the returning champ. And we have a stall call here. First stall warning for Hicks and Boss. And that's it, folks. It looks like Gabe Hicks and Boss is going to be Montevallo's first ever NCAA champion in any sport. And what an exciting time for the Falcons in Alabama, Montevallo, Alabama. Excited for them, excited for their first year program, coached by Daniel Owenby and Michael Land. I mean, you're talking about a historic run for this institution. You know, Hickson Ball is an NCAA qualifier at the Division I level. And essentially, after that point in time, he graduated his degree and decided, I, know I want to wrestle some more, so I'm going to go Division II at Montevallo University, and I'm going, I'm going to 
championship. And there he is hugging his mom and his dad and his grandma. Looks like over there an exciting time for the Falcons. And he's out there with Coach OMB. And Josh Portillo is going to ask him some questions here and see what he's got to say about this experience. On the national title, talk about, uh, you know, you were the first ever national qualifier for Montevallo. You're the first ever All-American. And now you're the first ever national champion in any program for Montevallo history. So talk about what that means to you. Man, I'm just honored um, to be given this opportunity. You know, I've waited a long time to wrestle in front of all my support uh, back home. And, you know, Montevallo holds a special part in my heart, place in my heart. And, you know, I'm just blessed to have represent the university. So. Yeah, awesome. And talk about the people that you went over and hugged right after your championship victory. Yeah, that was my parents and my, my girlfriend. They've helped me through so much for, I mean, forever since I've known each of them. So, you know, it was, I just had to do it. Awesome. Well, you're a history maker for the Montevallo program. Congrats on your national championship and enjoy your celebration. Thank you. Exciting stuff there for 133 pounds and for Gabe Hicks and Bob. Ups next here at 141 pounds. In the red corner, we will have Nick James from Nebraska Kearney and then Zach Donathan from Tiffin University. And here we are showing showcases some of the uh, placers at the 125 pound weight class. You know, Christian Mayhaw, we talked to him earlier, obviously, and winning that national championship from McKendry. Then you have Jackson Rothman from Augustana. And third place, James Joplin from Lander, guy transferred from NC State, two time All American now at the Division II level. And then you have Isaiah Games, Adam State, who had a pretty historic run from Super Region 6. Then talk about uh, the kid from your alma mater. Yeah, Zach Arada, I mean, uh I'm no longer the last All-American at 125 for Nebraska Kearney, so uh, he had a really impressive year. Uh, a lot of people will say he kind of came out of nowhere this year, but uh, he's just a freshman, and he's already fifth in the nation, so I'm excited to see what he can do moving on. And then we talked about Shane Corgan earlier, beating Rothman earlier, the regional tournament. Obviously, you know, the second seed, he had a little bit of a bumpy start earlier, but finished in sixth. And then Trevor and Gray from Pitts Johnstown and Manuel Leha, Davenport University's first All-American. Yeah, how about that? And here we are at 141 pounds. I alluded to prior to that commercial break. And red corner, we got Nick James. We're just talking about the Lopers. You know, your school, you're a Loper product. Nick James there, Kearney kid, hometown kid from Kearney, Nebraska. Got to be excited if you're a Loper fan or anywhere in the central Nebraska area to chime in to support the institution and the kid who's from that town. And then I think out of the green corner, returning national champ. I mean, Zach Donathan. Talk about a guy who's been here before, who's had a lot of success. Um, you know, he's very tough to beat, very long, very strong. Mason, Ohio product. You know, excited to see what he can do and what he can bring to this 141-pound title bout. And it's nice here, too, that we get to see a little bit of uh, inside information about these athletes when we hear their come-out songs and style of music they like. And, 
You know, earlier we had Dancing Queen by ABBA, and then we had Rocky, and now we're getting a little bit of trap music, so it's a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. And here comes Donathan. Talk about a guy out of Man on a Mission. He's only lost one Division II match ever. It was the Christian Small of Lake Erie a couple years ago at the NCAA Regional 2023, and he redeemed that, that uh, lost to Small last year in the finals, and this year at the NCAA Regional. Yeah, I'm really excited about this matchup. Uh, I know both of these guys pretty personally. Um, I grew up wrestling Zach Donathan in Ohio, so it's exciting to see him here. He's actually, co they're coached by uh, Tony Guerra and Nate Hagan. Tony Guerra was my high school coach when I was in Ohio, and Nate, Guerra, or Nate Hagan was my teammate as well, so it's pretty cool to see them in the coach's corner and supporting Zach Donathan. But then I was also teammates with Nick James, so. A lot of conflicted interest there for you. And uh, not to date myself, but Tony and I were in the, in the same national tournament in 2007. So, uh, yeah, I've known Tony for quite a long time as well. Yeah, Tony Guerra was the two-time national champ himself. So Zach Donathan's looking to, to match his coach here. Yep, Uni University of Finley product. Yep, that's right. Both guys are kind of at a distance here, just kind of reaching and trying to fill each other out. Yeah, Nick James is a really heavy hand fighter. He's going to look for a lot of snaps and to kind of beat you up in the hand fight. And what I remember is Donathan is very slick and very good reattacks. Likes the outside tie, the elbow pass, and the over tie. So it'll be interesting to see how he can use that length to avoid the snaps and hand fights from Nick James. Yeah, his length is definitely a factor. Uh, Zach Donathan's definitely a pinner. Last year at the national tournament, he won the Gorian Award for most falls in the least amount of time. And uh, I remember his first three pins on the way to the finals were on about 30 seconds or a minute. So he knows how to pin. I know he likes cradles. So we'll see if he can find something on Nick James here. Well, I would hope with that body, body style and, and shape at 141 pounds that the cradles would be in his arsenal. Definitely. Nick James definitely has an amazing double leg in his arsenal. Super powerful with it. But he's also got... Uh, high flying moves as well. You can go upper body and you can put you on your head, that's for sure. And Nebraska Kearney's still involved here in the team race. They do have an outside shot uh, at second place potentially, but they do need some things to go their way. Uh, you know, being at five points behind Lambert University, they're going to need some falls. Nice body lock attempt here by Donathan. And Nothing Donathan now we got a three point takedown. Okay, that could have been a lot worse for Nick James. Uh, again, I told you Donathan is very dangerous. You saw him try to attack the head there, but Nick James does a really good job of just giving up the takedown. But yeah, Cardi's five points behind in the team race for second place. So uh, hands down, they need to win this match. And Lander University, who they're behind, they'll have two national finalists later on in David Hunsberger at 165. And then and at Juan heavyweight Ed, Ed, and Juan Edmund Edmund Holmes. Holmes. Yep. yep. So yep. they'll have two chances, and Carney has a chance right here to win a title. And the other thing to think about, too, is, you know, bonus points would help. You know, Nick James catches any any type of uh, tech fall, major decision, uh, pin would be great, too, you know. So period's going to end. Three to one. Zach Donathan, the returning national champion with the lead right now. Look at this body lock here. I mean, nice little peek there. He comes up right to that body lock. James is going double overs, and you can tell he, he almost tries to stay in it too long. You know, you hate that form, but if you be at this high caliber, and especially at a high-risk move like that. Yeah, well, Nick James is kind of that guy. He likes to play with fire. He's, he's got a lot of big moves, too. It has hurt him here and there, but um, sometimes you got to play with fire a little bit. And Nick James starts down, trying to get an escape here. Advantage time now at 20 seconds there for Donathan of Tiffin University. What helped with Donathan on that body lock is his height. He's got a height advantage on Nick James, and... No, you're exactly right. I mean, especially you saw James try to clamp down and he rolled almost to double overs or a salto type uh, maneuver. And, and that position sometimes he, he couldn't quite get there. Another takedown here by Donathan. Back in that top position, lets him up here. 6'3 with 33 seconds advantage time. I mean, realistically, every shot that Donathan has taken, he has gotten in deep on and scored. And, you know, you're, if you're Coach Guerrero over here, you almost tell him, hey, get another, get another, right? James is leaning very heavy here. 
I mean, do you think snap, a chop, maybe a post here to, to really counteract that lean? Uh, yeah, I'm thinking uh, he, he's going to want to keep trying to snap him. Nick James is uh, really good with his hand fighting. He's got to keep trying to beat him up and maybe throwing in some more fakes here. And I feel like, you know, we talked about styles and matchups earlier. We talked about Nick James, and you were talking about his hand fighting capabilities and really trying to get to that double leg. And Donovan's length seems to be a problem for him. Yeah, definitely. He's got to get past those, those long arms. Donovan's doing a good job of getting his hands in between on the fight and also trying to get his head between it. I mean, it's almost like, you know, he needs to get to a hook or he needs to get to a Russian tie. He needs to bring him in closer. But just because the length is a problem enough to really get enough leverage to be able to push, pull, or bang and create that... Definitely. He's, he's, he's got to find a way to get to some type of tie to clear those hands. Nice leg attack to there by Donovan. There at the end of the period. It's going to be Green's choice. Let's see what Donovan does. Donovan's going to take down. Here's that first takedown to that body lock here. Again, he stays in it too long and that heights an advantage here. And here's the second one. Outside ankle. Nice little pick there. Climbs up well. Goes right to that tight waist into a short half. Right to his feet. Donovan's up. Nice mat return attempt by James. And he's just going to let him go. And it's 7-3. All right, so Nick's going to need a little more than a takedown here. He's down by four points. Still having a hard time clearing those hands. His head hands defense is great, too. So that length is obviously being a factor. And Maybe a misdirection, you know, or putting two shots together. Yeah, I might want to try to fake one way, attack the other. The thing with the double leg is usually it's a straight on shot. And I feel like we got to get a slight angle here. But for now, Donathan's looking poised for his second national title. Donathan actually started his career at Ellsworth Junior College. Yeah, he is an Ellsworth Community College product, you're right. Yep, and then he actually took a couple years off, kind of disappeared for a little bit and came back, and now he's fighting for his nas second national title. 45 seconds left here. A lot of half shots attempt by James. Still, still not able to penetrate very well. There he goes. Oh, deep. Oh, man, that was a great attempt there. Couldn't get those hands quite locked. Now in an over-under, he's going double overs here. I think James, you know, when he's at the point of the match, 30 seconds, he's going to go big or go home. Yeah, again, he's either going to need two takedowns or something to his back, which Nick James is never out of the ma a match for that. But all Donathan's really got to do is defend. He's not nice. going to get caught for stalling. Snatch single attempt there by Donathan, 15 seconds here. Tries a little waist throw action there. Can Nick James come up with anything here? I don't think... Uh, Don oh, tries a mixer. Goes for a mixer. He's going to go down swinging. But Zach Donathan's going to pick up some back points as we close out this match. And your two-time NCAA champion from Tiffin University, Zach Donathan, man. Just an incredible story, right? Talking about a guy who took time off, and here he is winning his second title. Look at him. He's elated with emotions. Yeah, definitely. Uh, both wrestlers fluttered with emotions right now. Uh, you know, we, we saw them take a very similar pose, and I think it's very poetic to the wrestler, you know. Uh, Similar emotions in a way, but one's obviously relief for a title and one's obviously disappointment. But Zach Donathan, two-time NCAA Division II national champion. So Zach Donathan's going to join our host, Zion. Zach, two-time national champion. Anything different from the second one to the first one? Uh, no, not really. Same thing, <laughs> nervous. Excitement, it's just wrestling. That's all it is at the end of the day. It's another wrestling match. Coach, Coach Tony over here is a two-time champ. You're a two-time champ. Talk about what's your relationship's like with Coach Tony. I love Coach Gary, man. He's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Had a long road, and he gave me a chance, and now we're here two times later. Congratulations, Zach. Go celebrate. Thank you. All righty, so let's check out this replay again. He had that nice body lock takedown where he kind of picked Nick James off his feet. Then there was that slick ankle pick. Again, took Nick James kind of right off his feet. And here you see his opponent kind of going for it at the end, but Zach Donovan, two-time national champion. Yeah, up next here, 149-pound weight class. We got a dark horse and Thompson and Jacob Ely from Pitch Johnstown.
All right, welcome back. Those of you following at home, NCAA.com and Flow Wrestling. Up next, 149-pound weight class. We have Jacob Ely from Pittsburgh at Johnstown. A guy who's been around. He's, he's a very seasoned veteran, 29-2 and two record coming into this tournament. And then we have a relatively unknown, right? We're talking about a guy here who comes in unseated and Cody Thompson from Colorado School of Mines. Upsets the eight seed first round in a 5-3 decision. Then he upsets the top guy who upset the number one seed in Christian Small with a, a deep battle, 13-11. And then finds a way to beat returning national champ, 141 pounds, Zeth Brower in the semis. And so it's just an exciting story. Had a chance to talk with Austin DeVoe beforehand, the coach. And he said, I said, any interesting facts about uh, Cody Thompson? He said, you know what? The one thing is interesting, he's allergic to barley. So I thought that was an interesting fact about it. Anything you could tell me. Okay. He's allergic to barley. So I'm, I'm assuming that he's probably a seltzer man if, if I was to give or take. Yeah. And here comes Jacob Ely. And talk about a guy who's been around a while and he's done really great things. The Hopewell High School product. I mean, he has been around the block several times for UPJ for Pat Pecora. I'm excited to see what he brings. And uh, Tyler Reiner, the coach there. UPJ yeah. has a his historic program of producing some of the best middleweights, in, in, at least in Super Region 1 and Division 2. Yeah, historic program, and I mean, he's had a really solid career for him. This is his fourth time all american -ing for Pitt-Johnstown, and he's in the national finals now. And here comes the dark horse we talked about earlier, here Cody he Thompson. Engineering major, Colorado School of Mines. The only degree they have is engineering, but they have 17 different types of engineering. And so it's exciting for them. And I, I, he might be the he, is he, is, it might be the second finalist in school history. I'm not entirely sure. I know Mines has had a heavyweight in the past. But uh, it'll be interesting to see what he can do here, especially since he's on fire upsetting a lot of these wrestlers here in the 149-pound bracket. Yeah, I mean, if you want to root for an underdog, here's your guy. Barley or not, right? <laughs> All right. Hands are being shaken. And we are underway here in the 149-pound National Division II Finals. Right off the gate there, Thompson's in deep. I noticed Thompson shoots a lot. He's got a very long frame, so it might be a little bit easier for him to get to, to a leg, but he's definitely going to be taking a lot of shots in this match. Jacob be really working a front headlock right now. Nice shrug there. He might get behind. Oh. A little, a little, he did like a little shoulder shrug, looked like a peek out almost or a drag. I couldn't really see it from my angle, but here they are in a wizard position. He's going to try to hook that ankle and get underneath and elevate it. The ref's got to watch that knee. Yeah, I was going to say that was getting a little nasty. So they're going to reset there. 30 seconds into the match. Ely here, you can tell he looks like he uh, might have a tanning bed membership. Kudos to him. I know a lot of wrestlers like to tan. can help uh, reduce skin infections, which obviously we know can be problematic in our sport. But Thompson's in the mountains of Western Mountain. Nice single leg shot again here. Yep, he's in on another lock here. He's going to try to bring it to his feet. He's almost got to stand up and get to that sewing machine position, like run the pipe or bars the guard. He shrugs it. And nothing yet. We got wow, his flurry. No wow, now Ely's in his own oh, shot. Man. Yes, he is. Watch Holy that cow. knee. Ooh, watch that knee. Thompson is kind of, ooh. I'll tell you what, my knees couldn't do that. Yeah, a little scary, a little scary. But wow, what an exchange we got here. Now it's looking like Ely might Thompson's come on trying to get here. to a knee, though. If Thompson get to his knees here, he's in a much better position than being on his butt. Yeah, Thompson needs to keep that far ankle, though. He's keeping that right ankle of Ely. Loses it, and he's going to inevitably give up the takedown. Three-point takedown. So Thompson, oh, and Ely's got him on his back. Yes, he does. Ely's got him on his back. Ely could get the fall he here. He could end this quick. Holy cow, Jacob Ely. Thompson's fighting to tough. It. It's, he's close here. He's got 55 seconds, plenty of time. He's got time for it. Nice recovery here by Thompson. Tough position to be in. You put on your back in the NCAA Finals. Yeah, Showed wow. a lot of perseverance and resistance there by not cashing it in. But nice little switch to get an escape by Cody Thompson. It's seven to one, but wow. Huge exchange by Ely to, to finish that takedown. He kind of pulled Thompson back, planted him right on his back. And he, was, he was inches away from getting the fall there. 
he was almost dead to rights. Oh, yeah. I thought I was going to have to go out there and get ready to interview him. <laughs> Listen, I would have filled in for you. I would have had your back and get you time out there. Could it happen quick? Oh, yeah. Hey, I wouldn't be upset if there was a fun pin in one of these matches. Ely with the 7-1 to lead as the first period ends. He reps off the disc. It looks like it's going to be Green's choice. Mines, Thompson looks over the corner. He tells him to defer. So a little replay here. Thompson was inches away from a takedown there himself. Really funks his way out of it. Thompson, you see his knee almost dislocating right there. I mean, he has got the gumbiest knees, I mean, so far we've seen in this NCAA championship. Yeah, that was nasty. That was nasty. All right, so now it's going to be 8-1 to one for Ely. And I got a feeling Thompson's going to go back to that single. He's gotten in on it twice, and he just took a little um, half shot there. Very similar setup to the first two. He's really got to work that post and circle up to his feet. He's looking for that drug or that drag or that... Um, shrug there from that front headlock defense position. Every second, Thompson, every second. So, I mean, Thompson was losing in a semifinals match against Zeth Brower, and they entered a scramble, and Thompson came out on top and it, picked up some back points, and then he proceeded to ride Brower out for Brower out for the next minute. So Thompson's got a gas tank, and he's not going to stop fighting yet, even though he's down by seven. He's just one seven point away from tying it up. Going body lock here, 50-50. See if he can step and get his hips. Lee has responded well to. Talking from experience here, and I know you've been on the stage, and I've been on the stage too. There's no better feeling than wrestling on the stage in the NCAA Finals. Just the reverberation of the stage, the lights, the sounds, the noises, the fans. Up, oh, nice takedown attempt here. Nothing yet, nothing yet. Three-point takedown here by Ely. A slick go behind for Jacob Ely. He's going to take an 11 to one lead. But a short time left here in the second. Wow, and you're gonna call Stalling on Ely yeah, there. It's it's the subjective, right? I mean he's still in that lat grab position. Yeah, I mean let's look at that takedown again. Looks like a leg attack attempt here by Thompson. And uh, you know, obviously Ely does a great job of down blocking, getting to that front head and hitting the go behind. So, nothing these last two seconds. You know, Pecora and, and uh, Coach Reinhardt over there are upset about that uh, stall call. There's that go behind there, a little short handed drag there. Thompson stayed too long there on his knees. Third period here, Thompson going down. Riding time's around 45 seconds. Thompson's up to his feet. He's walking the hips out. And we got an escape here. It looks like it's 11-3 here, 50 seconds advantage time. You know, eight point differential here. Thompson's gonna need a big move to make something happen. So Thompson's going to have to create some action here. So we'll try to find a lock and maybe create a scramble and hope to catch Ely on his back. Nice leg attack attempt back to that single. See if he goes elbow down or is he going to split the middle and go Iranian. He cracks him to a hip. Oh, 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 we might have three here on the edge. He needs to pull him in. That's three. Yep. He's still in. Yep. I think that uh, maybe well, they didn't want to challenge that. And Pecor's grabbing the brick. He's thinking about it. He is. I mean, it's one minute left. You got a five point lead. Yeah. But you, you never wait? know what could happen. I know. I know. It's a tough situation, right? It looks like the officials might take a look at it. They wow, are talking okay. it over. Fair enough. And one of them shaking his head. I think that uh, I think that he's going to. Uh, Maybe be contemplate his decision on that call. Yeah, they want to get it right, so they're going to check it out. Let's take another look at it again here, Josh. So he pops his head here, he gets a crack down, and he tries to switch over, and it looks like Thompson does get to that leg there. And, and then, he, But he pulls it away, and then, okay, right here. It does ah. not look great, but watch him drive to it, double off, and he falls to a hip, or he actually turns and bails. I take that back, right here. Look at that, no wizard, no nothing. And so he has both ankles. Wow, yeah. 
my instinct is that it's a takedown, but let's let's see it again. I mean, he whizzers, and then he lets go with the whizzer, and he's right there, right behind him there with both legs in. I Hopefully don't they don't take too long here. Because they are slowing it down there. I don't know if they would consider reaction time and if they get, like, half a second to, to technically react. And that's one of the beautiful things about our sport, right? Subjectivity. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see what the refs decide here, but there's going to be a minute left in the action. Call stands. Ely's still going to have an 11 to 6 lead. Let's take a look at this again. Here it is again. He pops that head. He tries to switch over here. Right here. Looks like looks like three. And then Ely clears that leg and goes back to that short wizard there. And then he bails on it. It's almost like he might have thought he was out of bounds. He just lets go of it here. And he has both legs class, and he is clearly yeah. behind him. Let's see. Oh, wow. They wow. reversed the call. Wow. Okay. I mean, Thompson's going to be ready to rock and roll here. they got to fix the score. they got to fix the riding time real quick. So he's going to have a minute to get something going here. He's going to need lots of points here, so. I think he's going to go back to that single. We've seen him on it three times so far. But he's going to need something to his back. Ooh, look at that adjustment there. Did you see that little peek from that single? Yeah, that, that was, was gorgeous. Huge adjustment. Now he's going to need some back points. That's where that takedown is going to come back to haunt him on the edge there. I mean, he got that takedown earlier. You're talking 11 9 match here with 35 seconds. Yeah, yeah, that is true. But 30 seconds left. Now it's 12 6. Remember, Ely's been warned. Stall car on the edge in the top position. Alrighty, so 18 seconds here. Thompson's gonna have to go for broke here. He looks like the kind that will. There he goes, right for that 50-50, that over-under position. He's had an amazing run so far, but Jacob Ely, first time in the national finals. He's a four-time All-American. And there it is. Pat Pacor over there, elated. Look at that man. The all-time winningest coach in NCAA wrestling history in all three divisions. Another NCAA champion for Pat Pacora. Excited for that program. Excited for Coach Pat Pacora and Tyler. Those guys have done phenomenal work, and they have a long history of having individuals in those middleweights, especially from that southeastern Pennsylvania area that are just very competitive and high level of wrestling. Josh Portillo, my co-host, is fixing to walk out here and interview Ely. And here's that, that adjustment here. A little Ramby action there. He pops his head. Comes to that single. Right to his back here. Near fall was the difference here, folks. All righty, we're here with national champion Jacob Ely. You're a four-time All-American. This was your first time in the national finals. Now you're a first-time national champion. Talk about what it took to make those adjustments this year. Oh, you have, you have no idea. So much extra time put in. Just when you think you're doing enough, you're not. You can always do more. You can always reach higher. That's what Coach Pecora says. Just always reach higher and higher. That's what I did this year. I got the job done. Yeah, and I noticed you shared a hug with your coaches and Coach Pecora. Talk about your relationship with him and what that's meant to you. Oh, it's meant the world. He's a second father to me. Helped me so much in wrestling, but... Honestly, I think he might have helped me more in life, which is what you're looking for in a coach, and he's the best. Awesome. Well, congrats on your national title, and enjoy your celebration tonight. Thank you. All right, up next, we have the 157-pound weight class. We have returning NCAA champ Nick Novak from St. Cloud State and Gabe Johnson of Central Oklahoma. Stay tuned, fans.
Up next, 157-pound weight class, Nick Novak, returning NCAA champ from St. Cloud State, and Gabe Johnson of Central Oklahoma. It's to be exciting out here at the, at the halfway point of our 2024 NCAA Finals. Quick look, fans, at the road to get here. here we have great front-field action pack, two days of wrestling. Currently, Central Oklahoma is in first place. They pretty much locked up the team championship. However, Lander University is probably going to lock up in second place here. A couple bouts are left here. Nebraska Kearney is going to finish third. And then McKendry in fourth place. The red corner, Nick Novak, St. Cloud State. Partisan. I went to St. Cloud State for grad school. I worked for Steve Costanzo, so I know what this program's like. I know what the capabilities of the athletes that he recruits. So I'm excited to see, you know, what Nick Novak's going to do, becoming one of the few multiple-time national champs in school history. 100 percent. I mean, uh, Nick Novak's been perfect the last two years, and by perfect, I mean perfect. He went 27-0 last year on his way to a national title, and he's 20-0 so far this year, trying to get his second national title in a row. Yeah, and you know, and he's had a pretty good road to get here, being the one seed and kind of really gone on skate. He had a tight match with, with Bailey Gimbor. Now the three seed, Gabe Johnson, you know. He beat Drew Weichers, the sixth seed in the quarters, and then upset the number two seed, undefeated, Jack Haskin of Lake Erie in the semifinals and, and Bronco Nation and for those of you that aren't Edmond, Oklahoma is not far down the road and they have packed Hartman Arena. Their Bronco chance, their UCO signs, Coach Todd Stiley's done a phenomenal job winning back-to-back -back national championships at UCO. Yeah, I mean this is going to be a super fun one. I mean we've got two powerhouse teams here. St. Cloud, they were the national champions in 2021. Central Oklahoma, national champions in 2023, as well as this year. So uh, two of the best teams and two of the best guys in the nation at 157 going down here. They've shaken hands and action has begun. And our officials tonight are Titus Godbout and uh, Carlos Mansuel, um, both guys actually from South Carolina. Here we are here. Looks like Novak's coming more direct here. Both guys like that quad pod or that four point stance. I definitely feel like this is going to be a, a calculated match here. Might be a little lower scoring, but whoever gets that one takedown. And uh, Novak's really good on top, too, so that's something to watch out with him. New Prague, Minnesota. Um, Novak has a brother who's a freshman at Wyoming who qualified for Division I this year. So he's going to be back in Kansas probably, I imagine, this weekend here. So it would be great for the Novak family to be able to bring home some NCAA hardware here in the state of Kansas. Definitely. Got to respect a family of brothers and how much having those brothers impacted how good Nick was. Yeah, you got a brother to yourself, right? Yep, that's right. I got a twin brother. and uh, He wrestled for Grandview. He was pretty successful there. But... Uh, so we went to different schools as well. So I wonder if it's tricky for Nick and his brother at Wyoming, but I'm sure they make it work. Well, I like you too. I have a twin brother. His name's Ty, and we both wrestled 215 in heavyweight, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay. So Novak's going to look for those little shuck buys, slide by type things. Um, he's hit a lot of those all tournaments. He's a really slick wrestler. Going to try to sneak behind for a takedown. 130 here left on the first period of the 157 pound championship bout. Nice leg attack attempt there by Johnson. He's in deep. He tries to double off here. He's trying to hip in. Novak's doing a great job of catching that wrist and that wizard. I mean, he switched it from a head outside attack to a single leg, which a single leg, I feel like, is a lot harder to finish than if Gabe Johnson were to be able to finish that double leg. But now we're in kind of this, uh, it's more of a scrambly position, but Johnson's going to get the finish here. Uh, now we got three, Titus. Yep. Huge finish on the edge of the mat. And the Central Oklahoma fans are loving it. I mean, you got the returning champ here on the ropes in the first period. Yeah, here we go. I mean, if there's a guy that could beat the returning champ, it helps uh, if you're on UCO because they have arguably one of the best cards in here. I mean, if you can hear them through the mics, I mean, they are they are loud. They've been loud all week. They've, They've been, been a rowdy bunch. Champions. They have been a rowdy bunch. Yep. And it's kind of funny because you have Augustana, Lander, and... Uh, UCO are both yellow 
and uh, gold and a yellow, gold and a blue accent. So like it's hard when they wear the same shirts to tell either there's one large fan base or there's several small fan bases. That is true. That is true. One point escape there with 23 seconds advantage time for Johnson. And so these last 30 play out, Johnson can get on the legs again. He really worked his way through that finish. He was really methodical. It wasn't a quick finish, and you know, a lot of people might have uh, let go on the leg there. But Novak's got super stiff defense, so you've got to be willing to go the long yard to get the finish. And that's what Dave Johnson did. Yeah, we're going to take a look at that here in a second. I mean, you think about him, the adjustment he made from that head outside shot, and then the treetop finish, right? I mean, you, you have, I, I prefer to take mine across the body, and he took his same side, if I remember. See, same side here, so it's like, it's tough to club and kick, and he got that back leg hooked and was able to double off. Yeah, I mean, he got that leg right between both of his legs, and Novak couldn't really scoot away, so let's see that one more time here. Scoops it right under him, sits right on it. Novak just can't slide away quick enough. Johnson takes down here, Novak's on top. I mentioned Novak's good on top, oh, and there's no. a reversal. And there's wow. a reversal. It it looks looks like he fell off the side there, trying too hard on that forward pressure. Yeah, it looked like it could have just been one. Get, I mean, I knew Novak was going to try to ride Johnson, but Johnson did a really good job of get, getting to his feet. He almost got the one, and Novak was trying to ride him, and instead sort of slips off, but... Johnson uh, sort of just flips right into him. Picks up a huge reversal. It's 5-1 to one now, Gabe Johnson. After that reversal looked over, Novak looked in the corner, and he shook his head. And you can tell he's calm, cool, and collective right now. And that's what you want in this position, right? I mean, you're down by four, now you're down by three. And uh, things exactly haven't gone your way, but you, as you and I know, the three-point takedown, well, one takedown brings him back in this bout. Yeah, and I mean, here's the deal. The reversal really wasn't that big of a deal if you consider Novak just got an escape. So it was kind of like a, a one-point trade-off anyway, so... Novak's still only one takedown out of this. And you know what? He still has choice. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, action on the edge right here. And Novak's going to drive him off. And yeah. yeah. And I'm telling you what, Titus was the official during that Joplin uh, Jackson Augustana match earlier. And he is not afraid to call stall calls. He calls it by the book. Yeah, he's not afraid for sure. And uh, naturally, Lucio, not a big fan of that. Considering. Uh, Gabe Johnson's got the only takedown so far. But. We attack attempt there by Novak. Gabe Johnson looks incredibly focused right now. This could be the best I've ever seen him wrestle. He's back in the legs again. Got to get that leg down. Oh. He picks him up, wow. slams him, and he might get some back points here. No, no near fall. Close, though. Close. You were just fun on there. You spoke just a tad bit too soon talking about the best he's ever looked, and he sure answered your prayer there. He, yeah, I mean, maybe he heard me, but... Gabe Johnson is on fire right now. He's going to try to pick him up again. Uh-oh. So Novak goes for a roll and almost even gives up back points. Things are getting, things are getting active. Coach James picking up the brick. I think he thought about throwing it there. I mean, that was definitely could have been two swipes, but you're up by six right now. He finishes his period on top. Here at the end of this period, we're going to take a glance at that replay there, that beautiful takedown there. Wow, and that huge ride out to end the period, too. Novak's choice. Here he is in that uh, solar machine position. He pops his head, he hips in, and nice flare oh. to a double. So close to a near fall set there. Check that out. That was, uh, that was high. The explosive power there by Johnson. That might just be the move of the finals so far. Here he is, Novak taking down. And, uh, you know, Gabe Johnson's got the returning national champion who has not lost in two years on the verge of defeat. For those of you who can hear that uh, UCO's uh, chanting something, I, I, I think they were chanting Rufio, I couldn't tell. Maybe he's a, a hook reference or a big hook fan. But. Maybe, maybe. But Gabe Johnson, impressive on top right now too. And yeah, Gabe Johnson's had a dominated tournament. He's won eight to two, tech fall in the quarters, and 11 to three over the two seed. So again, this is the best Gabe Johnson probably ever wrestled. Not that he wasn't bad before. But it's a great, he, he was a great all, time to be wrestling. Yeah. Your best. He was an All-American last year. He got seventh and uh, qualified once before that. But really looking on fire here. And he's got just over a minute left to seal the deal here. And these two have wrestled twice before national duels. And uh, Novak won both of them. Very close matches, though. Looks like Johnson's made some adjustments. 
Oh yeah, under a minute left. Uh, Novak's gonna look for some underhook action here. Taking Johnson to the edge. Johnson does have that stall warning. And Check as I mentioned that, there's another stall call. So it's gonna be eight to four now. He needs to shoot him off again here to get another stall call. Why not? Right there. Uh-oh. Three. It, oh, we might have some this drama is big. here, folks. This is big. 35 seconds. Now, the riding time's gonna come in clutch here, right? You have 31 seconds over the minute riding time. Do you try to ride him or do you just cut him and take him down again? You kinda can't ride him. I mean, you gotta cut him here. Yep, you're gonna right. have to cut him, yeah. So Johnson's gonna get the riding time point. It's gonna be, one escape makes it nine to seven. The riding time point that he's gonna get is he's gonna make it basically 10 to seven. So Novak's gonna need a takedown to send it to overtime. And he's got two stall calls. Yeah, that's so right. So he has got to wrestle here. I mean, he backs up. Titus will hit him again. I know, I mean, he's gonna follow the rules to a T. And Gabe's gotta engage. 20 seconds left. It's gonna come down to the wire. Novak in on the shot. shot. Hit him Novak here. He's gotta get that elbow down or chase that corner. Step in and drive. 12 Novak. seconds here. Novak trying to build up. Johnson stuffing the head. He's keeping that head stuffed and now he's cross facing. Keeps, keeps his hips away. And, and Gabe Johnson. Wow. Holy here we go. NCAA champ at 157 pounds. Gabe Johnson of Central Oklahoma. Holy cow. Takes out the returning national champion. Undefeated. Gabe Johnson. Gabe Johnson, national champion for Central Oklahoma. And while, I mean, you got to kind of be inspired by Central Oklahoma's uh, fan base. Like, I'm looking right at him, and there's a ton of them. You can see them in the, you can see them above the banner. Man. The You've wrestled Novak a couple times yeah. already, and they both so have been close and haven't slam potentially gone to Novak that really was the, the move of the match, I think. And, uh, you know, Novak tried to crawl back really strong, but... You, know, you never want to take losses, but... But, uh... As long as you're learning, bro. Gabe Johnson, he's your national champion. Coach told me early in the season, you're going to get the one that counts, so I remember that. Stay at the course. That's exactly what you did. UCO is going to take home a team title, and you got your own title. Talk about what that feels like. It's amazing, man. I, I can't really describe it. You dream of this, and, man, I'm, I'm proud. I love our fans, love our coaches, man. We're not done yet. Let's go. Congratulations, Gabe. Go celebrate, buddy. All right, and up next at 165 pounds, we're going to have David Hunsberger of Lander taking on Chase Lundsman of Upper Iowa.
and here we are at 165 pounds, right? In the red corner, coming out first, David Huntsberger, Lander University, just a sophomore, man. He's had a up in the team race too, right? That's a marquee matchup earlier, but he's able to squeak out a great victory. And in the green corner tonight, we have the returning NCAA champion, 165 pounds. Chase Lunsman of Upper Iowa. And, and these two wrestled, right? National duels earlier this year. I mean, you're talking about two guys that have faced off before that know each other very well, right, my friend? Yep, they faced uh, a couple of times. But uh, this is the national finals, and Lunsman has been here before, so Huntsberger's gotten the win before. But, uh, again, Lunsman the returning champion. Yeah, Atlanta University coached by R.C. LaHaye and Chris Frazier, who just got the uh, head coaching gig at uh, New Mexico Highlands University. And then uh, Upper Iowa, Heath Grimm. Heath Grimm and uh, Coach Broghammer, Carl Broghammer, some exciting stuff here. I fully expect a bout that's going to be a lot of hand fighting, a lot of staying in good positions, and I I'm, I'm gonna, my prediction's gonna be 6-4. Yeah, I bet it's gonna be something like that, a couple takedowns here. But uh, I know Lundsman had a high scoring uh, national finals last year. He won nine to seven over Hunter Mullen. So, uh, He's got the ability to put up points, but so, and so does Huntsberger. So. And both these guys aren't unbeatable, right? I mean, they both have came in with losses. Lundsman's got five losses, it appears, on the season record for him, and, and Huntsberger's got one. And so, I mean, they have been beaten at some point this year and obviously have made adjustments to get to this point, and so only one victor will rule tonight. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's such a tough level. Like, pretty much everybody takes some losses sometimes. I mean, you just saw one of the only undefeated people in the tournament losing in the national finals, so... Our officials look like they're ready to get this bout started. Lundsman will be green, and Huntsberger will be red. All right, here we go. Nice leg attack attempt there. Misdirection by Lundsman. Lundsman, that. Lundsman getting active up there. He's not looking to really just hold. He's trying to find an angle right away. Stalemate here. But Huntsberger came out, pulling the trigger, tried to get to a low ankle shot early there in the first 15 seconds of the bout. Fourth place finish last year for David Huntsberger as a freshman and sophomore this year. Lundsman, on the other hand, is a little bit older. Action is going to go out of bounds. Nice knee tap there, and he almost capitalized there with some near fall, some exposure there on the edge, but Lundsman's foot hit the floor, and the rule book states that if any part of the body hits the floor off the mat, it's blown dead. Hunsberger trying to shock Lundsman right off the whistle, but Lundsman is ready for it. He's 26 and 5 on the season, four times. Three times. This year's national champion. It looks like Lundsman wants to score on the defensive here. A lot of snaps, a lot of passes. He's doing a great job defensively. But uh, Hunsberger is being very aggressive offensively, taking lots of shots and really forcing the pace here. Right, so we're halfway through the first period. Overtie Shuck attempt to a double, to a body lock here from... He's got his hands locked. He does. He's got to step in front and get his hips in. He might have an arm trap, too. Lundsman has got to circle here and watch a stall call on the edge because he did kind of back to the edge. Now he's digging that hook, and the lock breaks. Lundsman having that hook in there actually kind of saved him. It could be dangerous if uh, Hunsberger trapped that arm to his body, but now Lundsman's using the hook, and he's kind of walking Hunsberger on the edge, and they're going to call a stalemate there. Yeah, it's tough right there, right? I mean, you want to move force and wrestle there, and a, a neutral position to call a stalemate that's not on the mat is it? It's not a call that I would like to make. It's interesting. I think the edge of the mat wrestling is a very impactful moment in matches. Um, you know, you can get, you can feel a lot of people pressuring in because they don't want to get shot out of bounds because of the stall call. So generally, I feel like we can see action on the edge of the mat, but instead we get a stalemate there. Lundsman does nothing yet. Lundsman's doing a great oh. job being defensive. Three point takedown for Hansberger. He tried a big move there, and it looked like he lost his footing. I, I really would love to take a look at that replay here in a second. 
But uh, it looked like he lost his footing and Hunsberger capitalized there. Yeah. Got a count here, it looks like for Stalin on Hunsberger. One escape. So Lundsman's got a gas tank. He's going to keep on Hunsberger. Try to wear him down. But uh, yeah, Lundsman kind of put himself in a precarious position. Gives up the takedown. So Hunsberger's going to take a 3 to 1 lead after the first period. All right, we have a disc flip here and see what will be chosen. Green's choice. Lundsman looks at his coach, Grimm. Grimm says go down, and he will go down right away. So in that replay, you see Hunsberger almost had that toss near out of bounds. But not quite. It's like his footing. He just didn't get set all the way. Yeah, yeah. So interesting first takedown. But we still got a lot of action here. Quad pods up, 2 on one and he turns and cuts away. 3-2 here, 19 seconds advantage time there for Hunsberger. Yeah, I mean, you live and die by the sword, right, with big moves like that, you know, and, and some people have made a career. I know a lot of good wrestlers that have, but uh, sometimes those big moves, if your footing's not right, you slip, the wrong push and pull type momentum, you can really get and put yourself in a very bad position. Owen oh, Hunsberger on a single leg now. Lundsman fighting hard with this wizard. Gonna so try to get a hold of that wrist. Oh, he's going cradle. Does he have Hunsberger's a Hunsberger's got a cradle. Nothing yet. Ooh, Nothing and yet. Lundsman he kind of uh, shows out of it. Wow. You just saw that stall call there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I agree 100%, right? He gets locked in a cradle here on the edge, and Lundsman knows the rules. So he's like, if I'm off the mat, he's got to blow it dead. And he stuck his leg out, and the ref saw it. The ref's going to ding him for stalling. Yeah, he might have made it a little bit. Obvious <laughs> because he kind of looked there and then stuck it out, but um, he did. He looked over, and goes, "Oh, there's the out of bounds." Yeah, but hey, this is a tight match still. It's three to two. Hopefully, that stall call does to come back to bite Lundsman. Oh, oh! Tries in that hook. Can he step over and throw a leg? This would be huge. Lundsman's got to get that ankle. He stay on here. See if Hunsberger reaches out. Lundsman's going to want to pull him in now. Let's see if Hunsberger sticks his foot out here. He's not going to. Notice how he's staying in wrestling here. Yeah, yeah, you can't call him for, you can't call him for stalling there. I mean, he tried to keep his knee in the mat, and it kind of slid off. We had a really good angle of it right here. The same position, 30-second different part here, and you can tell the difference between the two wrestlers. And, hey, I totally get how Upper Iowa might have wanted to stall there, but... Lundsman's going to keep attacking with his underhooks here. He's been close to a couple takedowns. And you can tell Hunsberger doesn't want to be here. Oh, we got a red stall call here. And he's back to that stalemate position from that underhook position. I mean, I feel like Lundsman's doing a great job of jacking him up and driving in. And, and Hunsberger's got to elbow inside and clear that hook or circle away from it. But, ooh, short time here. Wow, great double leg attempt there by Hunsberger with seven seconds left on the clock. Yeah, Hunsberger darts his way to a double leg right there. And it's going to be six to two heading into the third. And Hunsberger's choice. Oh, wow, Lundsman takes neutral. He's going to let him up. Look at this takedown again. This double was beautiful there. 7-2 here, 27 seconds advantage time. So it's, it'll be interesting if Hunsberger stays on the offense. Oh, he had that hook. He's got to chase that, almost lower his level, and really try to throw that by and get to that ankle. Yep. Lundsman's got some big moves in his pocket, so I mean, he's threatening with this underhook. I'll tell you what, this official's been calling some pretty good stalemates today. Hunsberger's taking lots of shots here. Go behind attempt by Lundsman. Overtie, he's trying to shuck it by. Looks like to a Russian pass. Nice shot attempt there by Hunsberger. Back on that double. Good sprawl by Lundsman. He's keeping that head stuff. Trying to push that head down and push the hips away. So nearing a minute, we'll see if Lundsman can pull something out here. He's going to have to reach into his bag of tricks. Less than a minute. 
to a single here. Can he finish this? He's looking close. Yes, he does. Three point takedown there. Okay, They're so telling the cutting. Are... They're telling the cutting. And Hunsberger was kind of trying to hold Lundsman in with his own legs. Takedown ties it here, folks. Those of you watching at home, 8 5, 40 seconds left here. Remember, both guys have been warned for stalling, so they cannot disengage here. They have got to wrestle. It's going to be tense. 30 seconds. Lundsman has the ability to sneak a quick one. He's keeping the pressure on. He's in on a single fight. He's close. He's close. We're on the edge here. We might have it. Oh, we might be out Holy of cow, that was close. We are close here. They almost, they're going to throw I, the brick. I was going to say, I feel like the refs either have to look at that. Uh, and Heath Graham just throws his hands up. He says, you know what I want. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Three. Wow. That, I mean. Let's take a look at that here. Shot attempt. Quick go behind here. He's on the leg. He might double off. I mean, he's on his butt there. He is on his butt, folks. And he does have a cross the hip. And his feet are in bounds. So how fast can reaction time be, right? And that's subjective, right? We that's, talked about that earlier. That's the question. That's the question. So, I mean, we are seeing a, a more slowed down version, but man, fighting for national titles, and this is as close as it gets. Now, yeah. it is worthy to note, if Lundsman does get this takedown, it's gonna be tied, but he's gonna have to ride out for 18 seconds if he wants to send it to overtime. And if there's no takedown, he's still gotta go. Yeah, it's gonna be very interesting to see what happens here too. I mean. I would prefer, you know, go out like a gladiator, right? They tied here 8-8, you know, 18 seconds. It's obviously win or go home at that point in that top bottom position. But uh, it'll be interesting to see what the officials see here when they talk to the independent reviewer. Officials seem to be mulling over here on the phone, conversing with each other. Hunsberger's pacing, ready to go, and let's take one more look at this instant replay here. He tries a pancake, looks like he tries to whip that underhook over, and then he snaps him forward, and Hunsberger takes a shot, and he sidesteps, goes that go behind, catches that leg, and doubles off. Look at that left hand there across the thigh. That's what they're looking at right now in replay, and the officials have got off the phone here. We're going to have a call here in the center of the mat. What do we got? What do we got? He hands the brick uh -oh. back. No oh, takedown. No takedown. Wow. No takedown. 18 seconds here, folks. Let's see what happens. Lundsman's coming straight at him. Lundsman's coming hard. Lundsman's coming hard. And Hunsberger's running. Hunsberger's holding ground now on the edge. Man, and Lundsman is selling out here. He's going all out. 8-6. Should be 8-6. Six, six seconds left. And I said 6-4 before this. Man, I was close. Yeah, yeah, pretty close. Wow, and there it is. David Hunsberg is going to be the national champion. And the second national champ for Lander University in school history, David Hunsberger. Fourth as a freshman, first as a sophomore, and two years left. Exciting stuff for the, the fifth to sixth year program out of South Carolina, coached by R.C. LaHaye. Hunsberger will have a chance to win two more titles here. And my co host, Josh Portillo, is going to go out there and interview him. Nice backflip there by Hunsberger. Thanks, guys. All right, that was a crazy backflip. Congrats on the national title. You were fourth as a freshman last year, national champ as a sophomore this year. Talk about the jumps you had to make from your freshman year. Yeah, I man, it's just the little things, you know. Stay in condition, keeping the, keeping the way you got going, you know. Last year was tough, came forth, and I wanted it this year, so I went and got it. Heck yeah, congratulations. So Lander, they're gonna finish as national runner-ups. You guys are jumping levels every year. Talk about your program and what that means to you. Yeah, man, we're a newer program. We're down in South Carolina. No one cares about us, but tell you what, they're gonna care about us right now. They care about us for the next couple of years when we're winning titles, so. Awesome, I love it. Congrats and enjoy your celebration. Thank you. Look at this replay attempt here. Nice whip over there on the edge by Huns Hunsberger. Nice, runs the pipe there. 
good double leg attempt. Pops the head and doubles off there. Defeats the returning national champ. What a scrappy bout there beforehand. I thought 6 4, 8 6, and Hunsberger hushes the crowd. Fantastic effort there by the true sophomore from Burns High School in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Up next, 174 pounds. We got a team that hasn't been back in a while. Grand Valley State, Josh Kinney and Anthony Desvine from Central Oklahoma. Stay tuned, folks. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here at 174-pound weight class. Coming out of the red corner, a individual for Grand Valley State University, Josh Kinney. Grand Valley State had a historic wrestling program, uh, and they cut it sometime in the 90s. And thank the Lord for um, some investments. They brought that program back. Kinney is the first finalist since 1988 and the first All-American since 1992. Coach Joey Simcoe and Nick Mason, as they call him, Curly. Doing a great job resurgence of that program up there in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Excited to see some new and new programs. We've had two new programs that have a resurgence. I guess you can't really call them new, but I'm, they're new to me. All right, and they both have finalists. So it just shows you how much Division II wrestling is really growing. Yeah, got to love it. I mean, uh, it's kind of like you're rooting for underdogs with these first-year programs. It's so easy to root for them to, to get to see history. I mean, we get to see Josh Kenny become potentially the first national yeah. champion in the resurgence of Grand Valley State. And walking out of the green corner to 50 Cent, Anthony Desvine from UCO. He's had a remarkable tournament. He's the sixth seed and comes in here and right out the gate upsets uh, the uh, number three seed, Cole Hernandez, and then finds a way to capitalize with Trey Sizemore from UND in the semifinals. And uh, this bracket's really been wide open. I mean, Scott Joel, the one seed from UNC Pembroke, got upset in the top half. And Josh Kinney upset the guy that upset him. So they both have put in the work to be here. And it'll be exciting to see if UCO can potentially bring home another national champion as an individual at the 174-pound weight class. Here we go. Action's going to get started. Uh, again, this 174-pound weight class was absolutely insane. The one and the two, the one, the two, and the three all lost in the... Uh, or the one and the two lost in the quarterfinals. You know, the one, the two, and the three did. Yeah, I mean, this... Devine beat the three seed. Yeah, and that's what I mean. This this was straight chaos on the first two days, starting in the quarterfinals, really. Got to love it. I mean, how many people would have guessed these two in the national finals? I'm sure Grand Valley State fans knew Kenny had the potential to do it, you know? And uh, I know Central Oklahoma believes in, in their guys. Again, they got the national title locked up, so... You could say this is just for fun, but they're trying to walk away with however many individual champions as well to go with the team title. Kenny's a Walker, Michigan native, um, local product there. So not far from uh, Grand Valley State. And uh, Anthony is a Edmond, Oklahoma. So he's a hometown boy, kind of like Nick James from Kearney earlier at the 140 
one pound weight class. His vine looks quick and long. Looks like he wants to chase angles and get to those corners. Yeah, kind of opposing body styles here. Devine is more longer and lankier. And Kenny's a little bit shorter, but arguably more built. I had a chance to see uh, Kenny at the Midwest Classic this year, and uh, he put on a show, upset some really good guys, made the finals there. And so, I mean, he's a very seasoned individual and has deserved the right to be here in this NCAA championship. Right, so halfway through the first, and nothing quite coming. A lot of clearing ties. It's like Kenny doesn't want to be in a collar. He keeps doing a great job of passing those elbows, and he wants to stay outside, it looks like. Yeah, I'll give this, this slight edge to Central Oklahoma for kind of controlling the center of the mat a little bit better. As I say that, Kenny hops back in the center. But the refs do kind of look at, you know, who's staying in the, the blue, that little blue circle in the middle, and who's kind of going out of it. And right now, again, it's typically to be pushing Kenny out of it. 40 seconds here left in this first period of this 174-pound bout. Yeah, so Anthony Devine is really interesting with him. He started his freshman year at, take a guess, 149. And throughout his career, he's moved to 157, 165, and now he's at 174. And uh, he's even wrestled a little bit at 184 as well. Yeah, and UCO, I mean, right down the road, they have... Um, a lot of their products come from Northeast Oklahoma, Coach Joe Renfro. Um, historically, in the state of Oklahoma, I mean, outside of really Oklahoma State, Oklahoma's kind of fallen off, uh, and no disrespect to them and Norman, but UCO has really planted himself as a very viable option, arguably the best non-Division one option in the country. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, the thing with Oklahoma State is a lot of times, too, they don't recruit some of the best Oklahoma guys, but it's Central Oklahoma that's consistently getting a lot of the best Oklahoma guys. So Josh Kenny being a Michigan guy, I mean, he's in his home state as well, Grand Valley State being in Michigan. But we're gonna start this second period of action, zero to zero. So Kenny being Double. stingy, standing on the legs, and big mat return. Nothing yet. He did try to hit a low shoulder there. He almost had Davina. It's like he's got on a short side. trick in there. Oh, and he looks dangerous with this. He, he might does. get some back points here. He does have some. Josh Kennedy's looking at some back points right here. He's going to take a 4-0 lead. So no pin, but that's huge. Humongous. Yeah, talk about a transition here. I mean, from that mat return to a short leg series to a nice Turk. That was a huge move, huge mat return. Oh, and he's going back for more. Yes, he is. Nothing yet. Nothing Anthony's quite doing coming. a good job. There's about a minute left now. Josh Kenny really showing how tough he is on top. I'll tell you, it's a difference maker. I mean, sometimes if it's your style, you can be not as good in neutral. I'm not saying Josh Kenny's not good in neutral, but if you can be super good on top, it's a game changer. Like right now, he's riding out Devine. Crowd wants a stall call there against Central Oklahoma. And, you know, he's got to build a base, and he's not sucking in here building a base here. So 30 seconds here. I imagine they're going to hit him. The refs yelling in the workout, work up. And I think he knows if he hits them, the UCO crowd. Up oh, there he goes. There it is. And he's getting more back points. Wow. Holy cow, Josh Kenny. There he's back again with that Turk catching the toe there, taking the head like a football. Going again. I don't know if he'll, he got the fall. Holy cow, Josh Kenny picks up oh, the fall. Wow, and the first national champ for Grand Valley State University since 1988, the researchers of their wrestling program. Fantastic stuff there on top by Kenny. You're talking about just a great move with a, a bone arrow, bent leg Turk here, catches him and pins him. I mean, phenomenal wrestling here. Way to bring back the program and start off with a shebang and be able to do that. And my co-host, Josh Portillo, is headed out there to talk to your new NCAA champion, 174 pounds. All right, we're here with Josh Kenny. Uh, you kind of just went off on top. Talk about what just happened. Man, 
All I know is if I get the legs in on anybody, it's done. And you, you guys just saw that, so quit playing. Awesome, I love it. So first national champion in the resurgence of the Grand Valley State program. Talk about what that means for you and being a huge part of their progress moving forward. Dude, it's so awesome to be part of this first year program, man. We're not a first year program. We proved what we could do this year. Next year we're gonna come back even better. I just wanna thank President Philly, Carrie Becker, AD and President of GV. Man, anchor up. I love it, congrats Josh. Thank you so much. Again, great there, bow and arrow by Kenny. I mean, fantastic job in the top position. I mean, and actually the first one tonight that we've actually seen Fantastic top wrestling. I mean, historically today, a lot of action on your feet, a lot of scrambling, and he's really done a great job of anchoring himself here in that top position. Like he said in that interview, he can turn anybody and get the leg in. Up next, 184 pounds, turning national champ, Chai McGeary of West Liberty University and newcomer Matt Weinberg for cuts down. Stay tuned. We'll be back. All right, folks, we're back here, Hartman Arena, Park City, Kansas, in 2024 NCAA Division II Championships. We have 184 pounds coming up here. We have last year's most dominant NCAA wrestler, Ty McGarry from West Liberty, coming up. Talk about a guy who just puts points on the board and just flat out wrestles for seven minutes. He's undefeated. Uh, majored his way through the tournament so far, except for the semifinals where he beat Warcheck from Wisconsin Parkside in a, a very convincingly decision. And then on the other side of the bracket, you have Matt Weinberg um, from University of Pittsburgh at Kutztown or Cutstown, depending on where you're from and how you pronounce it. A guy who is a seasoned veteran there from that Super Region 1. It's exciting to see what he can do here against one of the nation's or arguably Division II's best wrestler. I mean, yeah, both of these guys have been absolutely dominating the field at the national tournament so far. Uh, Matt Weinberg has gone Tech 15-3 and 11-1. So he ain't playing around. And here he comes out of the red corner, Ty McGeary. Talk about a guy here, I mean, he can wrestle in every position. He's tough to take down. He is tough to score on. 
um, in relatively any position, top or bottom. I mean, he just does a fantastic job. And it'll be interesting to see what he can do tonight with a, a seasoned guy, especially after, you know, six or seven hours of, of eating and drinking and not really being down to weight. And they're probably about a buck 90 out there right now. Yeah, I'm curious what some of these uh, heavier guys are weighing in at, but they've had pretty much all, all day to not worry about weight, and they don't have to worry about it for the rest of the year now. So ideally they're feeling good, but, you know, hopefully they didn't eat too much either. Tom Gary coached by uh, Danny Irwin and uh, Mike Carpenter. And in the green corner, we talked about Weinberg earlier coming out to down with the sickness. Ooh, okay. It's a nice little mix-up because most of our guys have been going old school or some yeah. more new school music. He's taking it back to 2001. Reminds me of my JV football playing days. Yeah, and I mean, this is a classic song too, but uh, the other ones were a little bit calmer, I feel like, but how can you not get hyped to this song? So let's see if Matt Weinberg can bring the energy here. He was you know, fourth Gilbert. in the nation last year, so trying to jump up a level here. Gives you a good, firm handshake to his coach. Cuts Town is ready to party. Cuts Town is a, another one of those schools we had. Yeah, University of Pittsburgh at Johnstown earlier. You know, the part of that PSAC system of the Pennsylvania State uh, Colleges. And so um, they have a lot of satellite campuses throughout the state of Pennsylvania. Definitely. And so Cuts Town, they had four national qualifiers. They had one other All-American in Bailey Gimbor. And Weinberg's in on a shot to start the match. He's already got a single leg. But McGeary's got some really solid defense. He's going to try to keep that right ankle as far, as far away from him as possible. But Almost hitting the split there. Yeah, but if you're Weinberg, you got to bring him in. You don't want the action to go out of bounds. But McGeary, McGeary might dive in. Oh, he looked like he was going to for a second there. McGeary almost doesn't want to turn away because it could give him his ankle. But now he's resting into a crackdown position. He's in trouble here. He's got a scoop. And they slide out of bounds. Nice attack from Weinberg to start the match, though. I feel like if they were a little bit more in bounds, could have played around a little bit more. But Cuts down, coached by Robert Fisher. It was interesting enough, he's actually one of the few Division II coaches that coaches two sports, and the other okay. one's not wrestling. It's women's golf. Golf, okay. You want to talk about something interesting, right? You, you're, uh, you're here, you've got a wrestling in subway finals, and you know, when he gets back, he's going to be on the links. Yeah. Some days I'm, I wish I was him. Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting mix, golf and wrestling. I mean... Uh, you know, you got the, the brute sport and then a sport that takes pretty much all, I mean, precision, precision all skill. Too, right. but. Yes. And uh, assist by Ziad Adad, NCAA champ for Coach Fisher at University of Cutstown. Looking. Yeah, again, Ty McGeary was your national champion last year. Weinberg, fourth in that bracket, so. About halfway through the first period here. West Liberty had two All-Americans, 141-pounder, uh, uh, Kion Grace. Uh, they qualified six, and then Ty McGarry, obviously, here in the finals. One minute here left in this 184-pound bout. Nice leg attack attempt here by Weinberg. McGarry's got to do something here. I think a couple more attempts. If he's not taking a shot, I could definitely see our official Evan Burchett, Atlanta, Georgia, to hit him with a stall call out there. Give it cross up, Matthew. No relax. No relax. All right. Still made on the edge. Still no points yet in the 184-pound national finals. There's that stall call I told you. Yes, and now he's got a shot. Back to that shot. Beautiful reattack there by McGarry. He's got to pick a side here. Reattacks are huge. They're, they're what win titles. But yeah, he's going to want to try to isolate one side here. And he, and he does. He's got both of the legs locked here. But he might want to even try to focus on one leg and just trying to hook one. He's trying to keep those heels away and keep that chest locked. That's almost dangerous. Nothing yet. He's got to get those knees up. Get those knees up if you're Weinberg. And he drives in. He rolls through. Nothing yet. Uh, now we got near fall. No, nothing, Ooh, no near fall. So no near fall, but the takedown from McGeary and head coach Danny Irwin is going to throw a brick. Yeah, he's throwing a brick. It looks like he wanted near fall, I think. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's got to be the question there. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to check out a replay in a second here, but uh, let's see. 
because you got to see when they get the I got control, down. and then one, two. Ooh, uh, I mean, he, uh, the mechanics of the official, where there were two swipes, but the issue is going to be where they fully extended. You know, yeah. a lot of people forget about that. They see that motion of the hand, and if the arm is not fully extended, the ref's not going to count that as the two complete cycles of near fall. It's got to technically be a full swipe, not a half a swipe, but it looked like he almost did swipe full. The other camera angle is a little bit better. We'll get our replay guy to switch back to that other one here. And I do almost want to see it full time, but you can you can judge it based off of the swipes of the ref's arms, I guess. So let's let's see. They're on the phone right now. Both athletes in their corner, getting some instruction for their coaches. Hopefully they're catching the breath. Yeah, now would be a good time to kind of breathe a little bit. They'll come back and there'll be two two-minute periods of action. Unless it's tied. Then we could potentially be heading to overtime. Well, the interesting thing is that flurry was fantastic and it didn't happen until the last 25 seconds. And, and, you know, McGarry, like I said earlier, man, he took that shot and got hit for stall, and it was like he responded right away. He has the capability of scoring when he wants to. It's just a matter of if he will do it. Yeah, it's always interesting when you see that, but I feel like I've seen that a decent amount. Somebody gets caught for stalling, but then they go for a reattack of some sort. But a lot of people are learning that it's, it's not a terrible style to have. Like, yes, you want to be offensive, but one of the best times to catch somebody uh, when they're not expecting it is to take that reattack, attack right when they've just attacked and are uh, not in a safe position. Yep, West Lip conglomerate, climb the hill, coming all the way up. No near fall. Okay, so yeah, there's gonna be no near fall for Ty McGeary. West Liberty still has got a challenge left, so we're gonna get to keep it. But it's gonna be McGeary's choice. He's gonna defer to Weinberg. And Weinberg's choosing down. McGarry's tough on top, too. I yeah. mean, it's going to be interesting to see what Weinberg does off the whistle here. First move's going to be huge. He just kind of gets wide. And he's going chop and attack. Kind of going more of a patient route here. Sometimes if you rush too quick, you could get flattened out, and then you're really in trouble. So Weinberg kind of taking his time. Tripoding up. Going big boy here. Oh, he spikes him. Yes, but no near fall. Wow, it's crazy how... Uh, you can do something as cool as that, but get zero points. That's funny you say that. I was sitting next to the Wichita Sports Commission, visit Wichita earlier, and somebody said, you didn't get points for that? And I said, well, I had to explain the mechanics of wrestling. Yeah, got to got to hold him there. If he would have held him on his back for a little bit more, maybe some points, but still pretty cool slam by Ty McGeary. Fantastic hit power and explosive. So they're nearing out of bounds here. Weinberg back to his feet. But McGeary going to take him out here. If you're Weinberg here, you almost got to think, right? He's going to a lot of crotch lift. And, and I know a lot of people like to fight that top hand throw because it's almost choking in some ways. But the bottom hand, the one that's in the crotch is the one that lifts. That's always the thing you got to fight the bottom hand. Yeah, it's definitely debatable amongst uh, coaches. But I feel like that bottom hand is the one that keeps your leg in, you know. But uh, you got to at least try to fight one hand. Sometimes if you try to fight that bottom hand, you might leave yourself open to get tilted. You sure. know? So you gotta be a little bit strategic about it, but if, if somebody's good on top, they're gonna try to find your wrist any way that they can. Weinberg building the base here. Coming up here one minute here left in the second period. So we've seen this a couple times. Uh, yeah, McGeer's owning this, this claw ride. And now he's got Weinberg flattened. Yep, the West Lip conglomerate is screaming Stalin here. Well, Weinberg's doing a great job sucking the building base. I know he's not getting up to his feet, and he's doing a good job of sealing. Back to a good mat return by McGeary. Another big one. Oh, and Weinberg's looking for a standing Peterson here. I think he's frustrated. He's throwing the kitchen sink at him. Yeah, yeah. I don't necessarily oppose it, you know. He's going for it. He's trying to be creative. Ten seconds here left in the period. Gary's doing a great job of driving over that elbow and not allowing Weinberg to base up. We're just going to see what oh, we got the stalemate here. Looks like by official Evan Burchette. We'll see what happens here with the uh, the uh, decision here in the third period. If you're Ty McGarry, what are you picking, Josh? I feel like in other matches he's chosen top, but might be kind of bold here in the national finals. But uh, 
He could try to go bottom, but Weinberg's no slouch on top either. Ooh, and almost a late tilt here, but instead the period will run out. 3-0 McGeary still. He's kicking down here in the third period. Coach Irwin is just not happy with the near fall. Every time Evan's swiping, he's just expecting points, I think. And uh, All right, looks like McGeary's going down, and Weinberg's one optional start here. Okay, so he doesn't even give himself a chance to get the turn unless... He's going to that front head. He's going big move here. He might be going mixer or chin whip. What do we think he's doing? Looks like he's thinking about a mixer. But uh, he's still on top right now. Wow, so they're going to call... Wait, did I see that right? Yeah, they called it for Stalin there in that front headlock position, and then he let McGarry go, so it's 4 nothing. Yeah, yeah. Remember, they both have been warned for Stalin here, so uh -oh. we're interested to see what happens in the yeah. second stall call there. Wow. He didn't necessarily circle all the way back in. The, he put the ref in the spot there, and it's kind of bad call you. Yeah, but, I mean, the action kind of led him to the edge, right? It did. They, they kind of ended up right there, and again, that's what, how it can be kind of subjective. Beautiful high crotch attempt there by McGarry. He's it, hooking that bottom ankle, going to step over there. He's trying to hook a leg here. Weinberg is to keep it from stepping through, and there goes McGarry to climb through. He's going to try to put him in danger, I think, or sit through. What do you think? Nope. Yeah, it looks like he's close to danger, but Weinberg being really scrambly here. It's being a leech. And there's danger zone. And he's going to get another takedown to go up 8-0 to zero with under a minute left. Ty McGeary looking for his second national title. Maybe his second most dominant award. Maybe, maybe. I mean, he's, major he's been 28 no on the year. 79% bonus rate. You're pretty quick with a calculator, aren't you? But already almost 30 seconds left here. Weinberg's got to make something happen. Maybe try rolling around a little bit. 30 seconds, right? Kitchen sink's got to come out here. But a huge mat return from McGeary. Man, he's good with those. I've seen a lot of those this weekend. We've got to thank our host institution, Newman University, just located down the street in Wichita, for hosting us and doing a fantastic job with Visit Wichita and hosting here for the 2024 NCAA Division II Wrestling Championships. Twelve seconds left here. Second stall call. Was that should have been a point on the board? Am I not mistaken? Yeah, Green got a point. Yeah, it should be yep. a two. Yeah, I mean we have a scoring error. It sounds like, but uh, either way, Ty McGarry's winning second at the championship. Yeah, Ty McGarry, third in 2022, first in 2023, and now first again in 2024. He is a two-time national champion. He joins. Cole Laya, who's a two-time national champion for West Liberty as well, at 125 pounds. And yeah, we're getting a, a Ty McGeer chant going right now. Take. So here we, here we are. Uh, McGeer's going to shake the other coach's hands, and we're going to get the interview. Ty, congratulations, second national championship. Does it feel any different than the first one? It feels better, you know? I, it's hard to explain, really. All the nerves that go into this weekend, you know? It's never a given. Everybody's out here wanting to win as bad as I am, but it just comes down to heart. And right there, I just stuck to my positions and just all the glory to God. That's awesome. Let's talk about tonight. What are your plans after winning your second national championship? Have some fun, I guess. Climb the hill. Congratulations, Ty. Thank you. All right, so we're going to check out the replay here. Again, McGeary had that big slam. We got this takedown that iced it towards the end of the match, and Weinberg tried to go for some things, but Ty McGeary, two-time national champion. Up next, 197 pounds, we have got a reoccurring NCAA championship bout. We've seen this three times between Derek Blubaugh of UND and Dalton Abbey of UCO coming right up.
And coming out of the red corner here at 197 pounds, your Bloomington, Indiana product, Derek Bluba, 197 pounds, coached by Jason Worth and Nick Kroom. This bout is a reoccurring bout. Uh, as a arresting aficionado, especially specifically for Division II, I have seen this match several times. This will be the third time they've wrestled in NCAA Finals. Both times out of the green corner, Dalton Abney uh, from Central Oklahoma. Uh, the uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma product has become victorious. And so uh, you'd expect a 5-4, 3-2 match. Both guys are very good in position, very explosive and, and powerful at some times. Yeah, 100%. This is going to be a good one. You know, they face lots of times, but this is the trilogy regarding the national finals appearances. You know, one of the beautiful things, too, and you, and you can contest to this, having been a former wrestler like myself, I mean, you wrestle somebody several times, right? And you're talking about the margin of error is incrementally, I mean, it's subject, I mean, it's so small. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You know, it's, it's hard to beat the same guy twice, let alone seven or eight times, you know, uh, Everybody in college wrestling is good as it is, and they've got coaches that are trying to make adjustments. So I'm really curious to see what coaches, or what the Indianapolis coaches, and what adjustments that they've made for this match. Well, here we go. And both guys here, one and two seeds. This is one of the few bouts we've actually had the bracket play out exactly how it should have played out. Uh, Dalton Abney undefeated again. Um, Major in his way through the tournament so far and same with Derek Blubaugh. He's got two losses and uh, those are two um, The guy he's wrestling Dalton Abney So Abney on a shot right away kind of like an ankle pick, but he's following him to a single now We're gonna get a quick takedown. He's got the ankle got, But yeah, Blubaugh's three. base is up three here. Yep. Okay, they're gonna call ah, three now gonna the brick. Yep, there it is coach Jason Worthen Tossing the brick here we go we you already know, got some drama. Yeah, and, and, and here, watch it again here. And he comes up, he reaches, he catches that foot, and right here when he turns and bails, he, even though he's pushing on the head, he's got both ankles and he's got both feet here. Yeah, like, I think that's two, right? But, or three. Three, uh, sorry, still, uh, gotta remember. Yeah, it's okay. It's, 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 it's easy to be up. It's two, and you're like, ooh, and three, obviously, it doesn't sound the same. Not at all, not at all. But don't have me looking for the three-point take down here. Central Oklahoma looking for two more national champions to finish out their night. They've got Dalton Abney here, who's, again, a two-time national champion already. And then they've got Sean Streck, who was a national champion last year as well, going for it. Yeah, and, and you know, we talked about that earlier. I mean, those of you at home that don't know, they, coaches have challenges based off the number of wrestlers they qualify. And, uh, you know, UND and Central Oklahoma, like most institutions, you have guys in the finals, you save them for later, and you can't take them home. And so it... Jason may or may not agree, Coach Warthen over there from UND, but he has to try, right? Because he doesn't know what the view looks like that they have in the back for the third-party reviewer. My thing is they held off calling two for a while, and then they called it in arguably the, the worst timing for it. So uh, I think that might be some of the frustrations from Coach Worthen. But uh, now we'll see what the refs are thinking here. Once again, they're on the, the telephone. You see it in the bottom of your screen. Yeah, it'll be interesting because this, this could play out big here early for this takedown. Oh, and, huge. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, they faced so many times before. It's so hard to score points on each other. So uh, it could be a one takedown match. Who knows? And this could be the only one. You know, in this arena, Harmon Arena, visit Wichita, they hired a full-time DJ, and he is back there fist bumping and glow sticks. And so I would hate to be on the phone like Car referee Carlos Manswell right now trying to imagine to hear something as intricate as this important takedown, and you also have the root sandstorm playing in the background. Well, the refs here are just kind of listening to the other side of the line. So somebody else is actually going to be looking at the call independently, and they're going to tell them what they think. Getting impatient here, these wrestlers. Pacing, ready to go. They've been waiting all day for this bout, and here they are now having to wait some more, and then and Carlos is hanging the phone up here, and we have a decision. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it looks like he's going to hand the brick back to you, Indy. Wow. No takedown. Wow. Okay, yeah. So we okay. got to race right in time, and we got to get the clock set. Yep. Zero, zero. Fantastic. Now we're ready to rock and roll, Carlos. Yeah, okay, okay. So, yeah, Abney had the takedown, but they waved it off. You know, that's one that might, I might want to look at the rule book a little bit more, too, because, I mean, Abney did have both ankles. 
But uh, nonetheless, no takedown. We're not at a zero. Well, if we want to be that specific, let's talk about Logan Steber and Jordan Oliver. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, both ankles means nothing. We, we know that now, you know. And, and, the, and the, rules of, the sport of wrestling has evolved so much and become more user-friendly and more um, non-wrestling fan spectator-friendly. Yeah, definitely. But hopefully these guys can uh, open up on some more leg attacks again. Abney, you saw we, he got to that slick ankle pick attack and almost finished off with a single leg. Both guys aggressive in the hand fight here. So again, both of these guys very consistent. You know, it's hard to make the finals uh, once, let alone three times in a row. We see it all the time, past finalists not making it. There was a finalist this year that, oh, and blue ball almost with the go behind here. Now he's in on the leg. Beautiful uh, re attack there. By so Blubal. he's trying to get Abney's feet off the ground here, and he's going to either try to isolate a leg or expose Abney's back, which he's got one leg now. Is he going to try to straighten and hook it? Or, oh my goodness. Might have close. Danger here. Oh my. Ooh. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Abney's being tough here. Readjusting there on that single. It's all that. He went from inside grip, both hands outside grip. Now he's back on the head inside single here. Blue ball with the hips, though. Wow, interesting exchange. He's got to drive to head under with that low single. Or he's got to get that elbow down. It's going to hope for a stalemate, I think, here. Blue ball was close to having Abney pinned, and Blue ball's doing a good job of disrupting Abney's base right here. Abney does build it right back up, but drag go behind here. He's trying to fly behind. And the hand nothing, is down. Nothing, nothing, nothing. That's three. And Derek Blubar going to pick up the takedown here. 28 seconds here left. Short time here. Blubar's got to keep him down. Oh, he's going bow and arrow. He's got to push his butt back in here if you're Abney on bottom. Got a swipe here. He's going to give him five seconds for it for the stall call. Ten seconds here left of the period. He's going to finish on top. I, I mean, oh, we got to blow a whistle there on the edge. Eight seconds here. Wow, so Derek Rubon. And Abney's a little slow to get back up here. I mean, he had a worry he there. Looked like it. He was a little gassed, I think. But I think he's looking for blood. What's he pointing at there? I don't know. Yeah, and he's got some uh, two knee pads on. Uh, you never know what injuries people have, too. I mean, these guys are both, they've both got many seasons of wrestling in. This is Rubon's fifth season. This is Abney's sixth season. So they've got 11 years of wrestling between them. So. They both got to be hurting a little bit. Short time here, five seconds. A Granby attempt. But Abney doesn't clear his legs, and, and Mubaugh's going to finish on top. Let's watch this again, folks. It's a nice adjustment here. Go behind attempt there. He tries to clear that leg. They got quite cross pick there. Beautiful job. Yeah, that was, a, off. that was smart. That was a really good feel, you know. Uh, the ref wasn't giving a takedown, even though Abney's hands were done. But yeah, mom's excited back there. We saw her jumping up and down on the instant replay. Love it. Got to love passionate, passionate uh, appearance. And Amy takes down here right in time to 32 seconds, start the second period. And he's tripoding up. Blue Ball's doing a great job with the mat returns here. Back pressure up. Ah, uh, decent mat return there by Blue Ball. He's still in. And we're out now. Trying to keep a toe in there, but UCO coaches are bantering a little bit at the refs, but Abney's gonna return down. It's not a whole lot to banter about, right? I mean, Blue Ball is wrestling fantastic right now. Yeah, 100%. He's going to keep trying to ride out. He's looking good on top with the chops and kind of switching through different breakdowns. Who tries a chance up there on that changeover attempt by Abney. Yeah, Abney tried to kind of sit out right there, and Blue Ball almost caught him back. Good breakdown here. Blue Ball is just wrestling hard on top. Yeah, he, he, he keeps going to the tight waist chop. His right arm is wrapped tight around him, and wow, they're going to call Stalling and Dalton Abney the returning national champ. I mean, he is he is building a base, but his head's in the mat. Yeah, you know, yeah. And that's an indicator of someone that's not trying to explode up. Mm -hmm. 
Well, if I'm happy, I want to kind of get a new start here near our bounds. Yeah, but 40 seconds left here. These guys wrestled in the Super Region Finals two weeks ago with Abney winning 5-0. And Blue Ball is up 3-0 right now with almost two minutes of riding time with 30 seconds here left in the period. Yeah, I'm really curious to see if Blue Ball can finish the, the period here with the ride out. You know, uh, that riding time's really ticking up. So if he stays over a minute, he's going to have an extra point at the end of regulation. And, I mean, he's really wearing Abney out. That top pressure and keeping him down. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Abney necessarily is, like, not trying. I mean, he clearly wants to get out, but... Luba just keeping the different breakdowns going. And the crowd went stalling there for Abney kind of going out of bounds. Do you see Goku vomit right now? They look very worried over there for having a guy in the finals here. Yeah. 15, let's still see if that didn't get one. 10 seconds here, tripod up. Big break down by Blue Ball. And that'll be the end of the second period here. Blue Ball's taken down. Okay, yeah, that was a, an immediate choice for him. So what's Abney's plan here? You're Abney, what are you thinking right now? I think you gotta ride him a little bit and see if you can turn him. And if you don't, you're going to have to cut it and take him down and turn him. No, he's going to let oh, him up. Oh, and there it is. Yeah, he makes the choice to let him up right away. He he's gets going, word. He's going for two takedowns. Yeah, he's going to need a couple. He's going to need a couple. Two takedowns will put him right back in the contention here. With riding time, it's technically 5 nothing. At a minute and 29 seconds, he will have riding time locked up if you're watching the clock tick down. Fighting there, trying to create some openings here, and riding time's officially locked up for Blue Ball. So he will get that point. Alrighty, so. Again, Abney's gonna need a couple here. He's going for him, but I wonder if he's got something that he could take Abney to his back with. Blue Ball is doing just a great job of hand fighting and not getting overextended. One minute. Wow, oh, we're getting some we can't hear you chance. Stall call there for Blue Ball. 45 seconds. I mean, a takedown, another stall call could could make this tighter. But the, the Dalton is hand fighting. It's great. That's the first leg attack he's had in this third period. He's doing a great job of hand fighting moving forward, but he's got to get to a leg attack here. 30 seconds. There we go. 20 seconds. Is Derek Blue Ball going to do it? They're going to hit Blue Ball again here, but he's doing a great job of, of trying to stay. There it is. So it's going to be 4-1 right now. 10 seconds. Looks like we have Holy a new cow. champion at 197 pounds. Derek Blubaugh is going to get it done. These guys have wrestled so many times, and Blubaugh has not won any of them. And here he is, winning the one that matters the most, stopping a two-time national champ of being a three-time national champ. Coach Jason Ward fan, Nick Kroom are related over there. I'm happy for them. Great program at University of Indianapolis. And he's coming out to the theme song from Guardians of the Galaxy as his celebration. My co-host, Josh Portillo, is going to get out there and ask Derek some questions here. And then we're going to take a look at that instant replay and see the high points of scoring here in this 197-pound bout. Hey, Josh. Talk to our newest national champ for us. All right. Second in 2022, second in 2023, and now third time's the charm. You're a national champion. How'd you do it? Uh, I waited a really long time. Patience and hanging out with the crew like the one sitting up there and the one sitting down here. 
Yeah, you had a super inspirational run. Who are some specific people that you want to give a shout out to that inspired you to this title? I wish I had an essay on me. Every single person sitting up there. My mom, my dad, my beautiful girlfriend right there. Mr. Bassbinder coming in this year. Royce got me here to college. I can sit here all day. Even my dog, the panda bear, he's, he's great. Gets I, me out of bed. I love it. And how are you going to celebrate tonight? Just pray and be thankful. All right. Well, congrats on the national title, Derek. Thank you. And here we are, folks. We'll take a look at this replay here from a high, high hand fighting scoring round. Look at that cross pick attempt by Blue Ball there. Beautiful attack, good map returns, and just relentless pressure in the top position. Got Blue Ball to wear Abby down a little bit, and I think he was able to capitalize. And, and Abby took, had to take neutral in the third period, which I think he probably wouldn't have taken. He wouldn't have cut him, you know, and he didn't expect. Yeah, again, that was a super fun one. Uh, just super inspirational. Like, you lose to the same guy two years in a row in the national finals, and you're faced with a, a task like that. But Derek Bluebaugh wins the trilogy. And we're coming to the last bout tonight, 285. Juan Hudman Holmes of Lander and Sean Streck of UCO. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back, folks, and probably my favorite weight class, and I am a little biased because I was a heavyweight, but uh, 285 pounds, man. We have returning national champ and Juan Edmund Holmes here from Lander University, and uh, I've known, I have had the pleasure of knowing Juan, or AKA is, is his nickname. They call him Debo, if you're a Friday fan, but uh, he had a great run at this tournament here. You know, the number one seed got upset in the first round, and Juan did exactly what he was supposed to do, and he got to the finals by upsetting the guy that upset the guy. And so excited to see him wrestle tonight against Sean Streck of UCO. Um, they've wrestled before last year, uh, this, I believe in the quarterfinals of the Nash tournament, and actually had some high flying action. Streck did come up with the upper hand, but Juan Edmond did throw him to his back and got takedown and near fall. So, and the takedown requirements were a little bit different back then. But, you know, Sean Streck, you're talking Purdue transfer, Big Ten placer, D1 qualifier here, returning national champ, two time All American. It is a tall task. Yeah, you know, Strex arguably one of the best wrestlers in his field. You know, he came in the three seed, and heavyweight was an interesting weight class. He, he took a loss at the regional tournament, but he avenged that loss in the quarterfinals to Ryan, Ryan Herman. Yeah, and then that, that was a crap. That was a crazy match at regionals. I mean, he was up, winning in last second there. He got a seven-point loop, loop 11-10. Um, but, uh, no, to your point exactly, you know, uh, Holmes is a Goose Creek, South Carolina product, and uh, Streck is a Maryville, Indiana product. So a lot of Indiana representation here tonight in the finals. Yeah, but as you mentioned, mentioned uh, Juan, Juan Edmund Holmes, I think he's super fun to watch. He's explosive. He's got some big moves in his pocket. He's got some throws. So let's see what he can muster up for Streck. Both guys, this is their last go around here at the NCAA tournament. And, 
Um, they want to go out with a bang, and I, I can say I, I don't blame them. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing quite like wrestling your last match ever. You know, if I was always told when I was younger, wrestle it like it's your last match ever, even if it wasn't. But now here we are. Last match ever. Let's see who can get the national title. Nice duck. Oh. Holmes. Okay, Juan. Okay, Debo. I've seen Juan do that a thousand times, and he is smooth with it. Wow. Uh, and it's just in trouble. Holmes tossing the brick. Well, I it? think... They got a stall call there on uh, red too. Wow. Interesting. interesting. Yeah, look at this. I, I think they're thinking beyond reaction. He squares and he ducks through That's and under sweet. here. There's a hand touch and he comes right up. And so I think they're saying it's beyond reaction time here. And so uh, uh, that's what they're going to look at right here. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see here what happens here. And I mean, he obviously could the, the not Matt return here. And uh, the stall call there could be instrumental later. You know, you hate to say that, but, you know, they're standing up here in the rear, rear standing position for too long, and the official made the correct call. Um, yeah, and like I said earlier, you got these challenges, and, and UCO, obviously, it's the last bout, and they probably got one or two, and why not save them? Why not use them? Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking, too. It's not going to really hurt them to challenge this. They might as well, and, uh, you know, they don't want Debo to get momentum wrong because then... Let's look at it one more time. I mean, look, smooth little transition. He fakes right, gets some stepping, and rush and shrug, and ducks oh, all the way man. through and under. Beautiful, but that hand touch, boom, right up. And so the hand touch was a rule a few years ago, and they've gone back to this reaction time. And so yeah. that's the part where the subjectivity, and you and I, we call it a takedown. It doesn't yep. mean the independent review in the back is going to take the same. Yeah, so we'll see what they say, but regardless, Debo, super slick. That was super slick. I want to look at that one again and again myself just to learn the technique behind it. And I'm a 125-pounder looking for technique to 285. So what you're saying is that you need heavyweights to teach you little guys how to do moves. Yep, 100%. <laughs> now, for what it's worth, I usually feel like 125-pounders and 285-pounders actually have some type of bond. Like, they usually get to get along with each other. Like, in high school, my uh, best friends were heavyweights. And then in college, one of my best friends was uh, Lee Harrington, who was a multiple-time All-American for Kearney. But we got an answer here. Three takedown stands. But, yeah, to your point, I think it's because the heavyweights sneak the little guy snacks. Yeah, yeah, it's probably what it is. All right, takedown stands here. So Strex going down here. Stall call does stand, and, and let's hope that doesn't come back and play there for Lander. Strex up to his feet. But either way, this could... Ooh. Bad return by Juan Edmund Holmes. And I've seen those those before. Um, so Strex going to get an escape, but... Uh, so my brother and I, we have a wrestling page called Portillo Bros Wrestling, and we get clips, clips sent in all the time, and we've had Debo sent in a couple times because he's got some big slams. Oh, now he's looking for a leg pass, but... Yeah, but uh, he's got to come up, and he's not coming up. He's elevate. staying down there, and Shrek's doing a great job of pressing forward and trying to get that leg back. And now he's going leg pass. Debo's just holding on here. Yeah, he's passing that leg on this side. We got, we got heavyweight scrambles yeah. here. You were just saying you wanted to be a heavyweight. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have the best times, right? We have the best snacks, the best moves. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, uh, Sean Strack showing his scrambling abilities to get out of there. But Debo, Juan Edmund Holmes showing his uh, scrambling ability too because he was almost dead to rights at first and then held it off for a while. But regardless, Strack going to take the 4-3 to three lead here with just about a minute left to go in the first period. Yeah, and that shot he took is beautiful. And, and the leg pass is awesome, too. And the flurry, I mean, this shows you how far wrestling has evolved. I mean, you think about early 2000s and scrambling relatively being new and then the progressiveness of scrambling and now how it's cross-dimensional it's cross -dimensional with all the weight classes. Yeah, 100%. I mean, that was high-level heavyweight wrestling. I and mean, I want to go back and watch a couple of those exchanges again. Sean's got that wrist on the back, and he's sticking that right hand up the backside there is what I call a snow plow. Um, it's just a way of trying to keep that head down. Second stall call here, but I don't know. Yep, and it's one point there. Yep. Yep. So that stall call, I said the first period, is going to come back into play there because Debo has got to base up here. He cannot lay on that belly. Yeah, so let's see short time. And now they're wow, green. Yeah. Wow. I mean... He, the rule book states don't like parallel, but he's going left, right, left, right. And uh, I just think, obviously, they want to see some improvement in the position. Yeah, for sure. Tough call to make, but... So, there's been three stall calls in the first period already, and 
I mean, there's been some action. Yeah. And I think there's been really good action, but just that top bottom debacle. But all right, first period ends. Five to Green's three in favor of Strike. Green looks and takes down. Look at that, look at this leg pass here. Sean does a great job of pushing off with that right foot, catching that ankle, passing it through. Sitting to his butt, and he brings his knees together, and puts got, weight on that foot. And he got the height there. Like the key in winning the scramble there is to yep. try to get height. Clock's not going here now, goes One point escape here. Six three right now. Uh, riding time advantage 102 for Streck. Yeah, so we mentioned Streck had a really solid career. You know, D1 qualifier Purdue. And then he was sixth in 2022, the champ last year. Juan Edmund Holmes, he made the blood round in 2022 for Limestone before he transferred last year to be a part of the, the Lander team that's really picking up some steam. And last year he got sixth. So he's an All-American last year. He's already done better than he did last year, but uh, gonna have to look for a takedown soon and try to tie things up. Yeah, and Juan was a uh, state champ in high school, a Goose Creek High School, 100, 189 or 195. So um, you talk about, you see a lot with heavyweights, and, and they make that transition from an upper weight, like 170 to 189 to 195 into heavyweight, and they learn how to wrestle at a lighter weight class. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you see that. I mean, these guys are both scrambling. They're both, uh, you know, they're being offensive. They're throwing duck enders in. Fun to watch, fun to watch. We've kind of simmered a little bit on some action, but that front headlock there, uh, thought he had a good bite on it. Tom Holmes, you want to get on him right here. Get on him while he's on the edge. Kind of put a little bit of pressure on him to stay in. Then you can start looking for some more attacks depending on how they pressure back into you. 20 seconds here left in the period. And if I'm struck, I'm kind of being patient right here too. I'm saying, you got to come to me. I right. got the lead. Yeah, because he's already got two stall calls, so. Even though Shrek's got one, he doesn't really need to be the aggressor here. Because Juan's probably going to take down here to make this a 6-4 match with an escape, but he might take neutral. It's really going to be hard to see what he picks here. Yeah, but at this point, two minutes left. Uh, I don't know how many more attack opportunities Debo has, and Shrek's really just got to stop one of them. If he takes him down, could ice the match. And I told you he's going to take neutral. Yeah, I have a feeling. Yeah. I mean, take down, ties it, and races right in time. Exactly, so I do think that's a good call. And He's going to have to ride him out. So we'll see if uh, Strike can escape after the takedown. But I want to see Juan get back to that duck under. But he's going to have to tie up for that is the thing. It, and I don't think uh, Strike's going to do that. Yeah. He's staying yeah. at this tie. See that? Debo's probably going to try to have to open something up here from space. There, yeah. see a level change in a fake. I mean, this is where Strike's going to get tough. I mean, you see as soon as uh, Holmes is connecting, he's moving his hands, trying to snap. Whenever he feels something he doesn't like, he kind of clears out of it. Otherwise, he's going to have his hands on him to kind of try to slow him down. It's amazing to see. We've had several Division I transfers here in the finals tonight, and the impact they've made at this level. Yeah. Good to see. It makes you wonder if they should have been at a D1 program in the first place or just followed their heart in the first place. But I know I went to D1 program two to start, and sometimes there's that temptation to be D1, but... I know so many people who are happy that they made a, a transfer to a school that they actually fit in a little bit better and a school that they actually have good relationships with. No, I actually did that too. Yeah, it's a story for another time. But yeah, I get it. Division two is highly competitive and, and you can compete at this level and have a lot of success. 30 seconds here left in the period. 30 seconds. What's Debo got? He's going to go fake and level change. He's got to take a shot here. Shrek is waiting. He's anticipating it. See right there, shot from space. And yep, he gets to go behind. Nothing, right of bounds here. Yeah. So no takedown, but I was kind of thinking that's what Strecker was going to wait for. One really hard committed shot from Juan, and he was going to try to get a go behind on him. Almost sneaks away with it, but 15 seconds left here. They hit the, him with Stalin. That's one point. Sean Streck's going to be your goes for the dark again, but yeah. Looks like he's going to be a two-timer here at Division Two. So UCO finishing his team champions and one more national champion with Sean Streck. 
He takes a lap of victory, a victory lap for Sean Streck. And he's hugging his coaches. Last year at the championship, he actually proposed to his wife right after the team won the title. So I hope that's been going well for him. And yeah, he's going to finish out two-time national champion. Congrats to Sean Streck. All right, we'll tune in here for the interview with him, and then we'll cut to a replay. Streck's going to say hi to the fans real quick, but here we are. All right, Sean, second national championship, team championship for UCO. Talk about what that feels like. Unbelievable. I don't care about the individual. I care about the teammates. All, that was all for them. They get me going. They're the ones that keep me going strong. And last thing, Sean, you know, transferring from Division I school to Division II level, talk about that. Talk about what that experience has been like at UCO for you. Wrestling's wrestling, and all I know is UCO wrestling is one of the toughest wrestling places I've ever been, so it don't matter what division, UCO is tough as nails, so. Congratulations, Sean. Celebrating style, buddy. Thank you. Okay, so awesome interview there, but we, st we started the match. Wow. Yeah, that's a, that's a yeah, that's a rep for UCO there. You got Dalton Abney and Derek Bluebaugh here at 197, heading out the awards. I mean, it's a great Division II tournament. I mean, it's what we expected, right? UCO, we knew was going to be tough to beat. Lander gave them a good run on day one, and then McKendry surprised some people. I think they finished fourth, and, and I think a lot of people really weren't sure what they had. They did qualify a lot of guys, but they had a lot of upsets. Yeah, 100%. The team race was really fun to watch. You know, UCO again goes back to back with their team titles, but Lander got the highest finish they've ever gotten with second. And I'm excited to see over the years, new teams keep developing. You know, Grand Valley State had a reinsurgence of their program. And, uh, you know, they had a, their first national champion tonight, Monte Vallo from, uh, uh, with Gabe Hicksonball, they had their first national champion for the night. So it was a, a historic night for sure in Park yeah. City, Kansas. No, yeah, it was, and uh, you know, we're going to be back next year. We're going to be in uh, Indianapolis for a festival year, which will be exciting. You want Festival years, for those of you that don't know, track and field, swimming and diving and wrestling in the same place. And so hopefully we'll come back to Wichita and have another good time here in a couple years. Yeah, so uh, a quick little run through of the national champions. At 125, Christian Mayhoff and McKendry beat two-time national finalist Shane, or, uh, Jackson Roman. At 133, Gabe Hicksonbaugh, first ever national champ for Monte Vallo, taking out the returning champ, Gavin Kiocho. At 141, Zach Donathan doubling up with his titles. Then we move to 149, Jacob Ely, after being a four-time All-American, makes the finals for the first time and wins his first title. And then at 157, we had Gabe Johnson for Central Oklahoma with one of the biggest upsets of the night, taking out Nick Novak, who was a na returning national champion. Yeah, and then 165, you know, you had uh, David Hunsberger come in and win Atlanta's second championship, which was fantastic. And then uh, 174, the uh, pin of the night from Kenny from uh, Grand Valley State, phenomenal for that program. And then at 184, McGarry doing what we thought he always could do. 97, Derek Bluebob setting, two-time champ. Dalton Abney in the heavyweight, Sean Streck doing what he does.
Yeah, heavyweight recap here. Obviously, you know, the Maryville kid had a great regional beating the champ, Shrek. But Shrek does what Shrek does. You know, he showed up and wrestled his best tournament. You have you, Mary, had an All-American there um, at heavyweight, Luke Tweeten. And then Augustana had one. Notre Dame College, kind of a sad story there at fourth. The school's closing. But Lerone Parks, man, he had a tournament, and he upset the number one seed in the Wrestlebacks to make it to this day. On the left-hand side, you have uh, Vance from UPJ, who's just phenomenal. I mean, he's had a lot of success, was the two seed. And uh, and then you have Crew Howard, right? Relatively new guy for Carney, but uh, had a really good tournament finishing third. Yeah, so, you know, a couple of interesting stories here. Lerone Parks is going to be the last ever All-American for the Notre Dame wrestling program, so... Shout out to him for that. And then Zach Peterson had a really interesting story. He was your sixth place finisher, but started the year at 97. And uh, they also, Augustana has an All American at 97 with uh, Max Ramberg. So he had to bump up a weight class and still punched his way through, beat the one seed the first round. And yeah, just a super fun bracket here. Yeah, and you talk about um, Augustana kid, uh, Peterson. He came in a tournament with a six and seven record. Yeah. Talk about having a tournament of your life. Talk about the, the one day I'm like, you know what? Today I'm going to have a good day. Yeah, but, you know, heavyweight was kind of like that. There's a lot of guys that could have came through. But at the end of the day, these are your eight All-Americans. Yeah, no, for sure. And, it, uh, you know, obviously I'm uh, very biased, but it's the best weight class there is. <laughs> yeah, maybe. There's pros and cons of 285 versus 125, but... The thing with the 285 weight class is it's, it's truly developing like every single year. Heavyweights are getting even more athletic. They're getting more creative with their technique. I mean, we saw it with the finals match. There's lots of fun scramblings going on. So these heavyweights can scrap for sure. Yeah, no, and you're right. And I, I remember as when I was a kid, the evolution of it, right? Guys like Tommy Rollins coming through and learning how to hit leg passes and things like that. And Yeah, upcoming. We got Future Flow Wrestling shows for those of you paying attention at home. This weekend coming up in Kansas City, we got the D1 Wrestling Championships. And I suggest you find somewhere comfy on Thursday at lunchtime, and you can probably become feral watching wrestling all week. And I know I am. I don't know about you, Josh, but um, I'm looking forward to it. And then you have the high school nationals in Virginia Beach coming up in the late of April, or the first week of April, which is always historically a great chance for kids to go out there and earn opportunities to compete at the collegiate level. After that, uh, U.S. Wrestling Open Championships, uh, April 24th to the 28th. And then we have the U.S. Marine Corps Challenge. Obviously, Junior National Champs out there at Fargo. Uh, the ju what's that? July 12th to the 20th, which will be freestyle Greco of both um, juniors and cadets and women. Yeah, lots of fun events coming up. We've got D1s coming up, and then we get into we kind of get into freestyle season now that a, a lot of the collegiate competitions are coming up. So it's going to be some fun action in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, no, you're 100% correct, and like, this is the best time of year. People say March Madness. I'm March Madness all day. Oh, yeah, March Madness, best time of the year. Yeah, they got to drop the D and pick up the T. Yep, yep, that is, that is true. We're getting ready for some team awards here. Uh, just a quick recap here, looking at the teams and the finishes here. Yeah, it, uh, it's, it's been a great tournament. It's been a great tournament so far. We're excited for the future of wrestling. There it is at 125. Meha coming out on top there against Jackson of Augustana. And then Donathan doing what Donathan does. Nick Novak with a beautiful inside trip on the edge. And the Huntsberger back on that beautiful double. Huntsberg saying shush to the crowd. And then he pulled out that crazy backflip as well. And then Kenny. Josh Kenny went absolutely crazy on top. Ends up getting the pin for a national title. McGeary getting his second NCAA title. Blue Ball beating the two-time national champ. There's a nice mat return from Debo, but Sean Streck got the victory at heavyweight for his second national title. So again, lots of fun action. And up next, team awards here.
And here in fourth place, you have McKinder University, coached by James Kiskin. What a tournament they had. You know, relatively, they were skirts of the top 10 all year, and they showed up this weekend and had a significant amount of upsets. How many All-Americans did they have? They had five All-Americans. They were led by national champ Christian Mejia at 125, and then they also had two third placers in Roman Schulke at 41 and Logan Kvin at 197. And then to top it off, Corey Peterson got fourth for them at 165. And then Ryan Ripplinger getting seventh at 133. That's awesome. That's fantastic for that program and for Coach Kiskin. Yep, and, you know, it took a lot more than just those All-Americans, but McKendry is a very tough team all around. Yeah, and, and to think how far the institution has came being an NAI school relatively not long ago and then making the transition to Division Two and being relatively competitive. Yeah, super competitive for sure. They have been for a couple of times. Uh, you know, I know they're always fighting for a top five trophy in the national team duels too, so they're going to have their moment there with their fourth place trophy. And then let's talk about the third place team as they make their way off the stage here. And uh, the University of Nebraska at Kearney, uh, you know, one of those other schools, we talked about the PSAC schools earlier, but Nebraska's got those two, you know, like Shatter and State and Nebraska at Omaha and Nebraska at Lincoln. And so... Uh, Taking the third place there, coached by Dalton Jensen. How many All-Americans do they have? So they ended up with five All-Americans. And, uh, you know, this is my alma mater, so it's pretty cool to see them doing well again. You know, they, they we were national champions in 2022. Uh, last year, maybe a little bit of a rebuild year, and now we're back in third place in the nation. Uh, we were led by two seniors, two veterans. Nick James at 141 punched his way to the national finals. And then Billy Higgins, uh, you know, these guys are my teammates and can't speak more highly of them, but Billy Higgins finishes out his career with a third-place medal. And uh, he went off on the bonus points, too. He had four bonus points for the team, so he definitely helped them get into third place over McKendry. And then also in third was Crew Howard at heavyweight. And Jackson Kinsella got fourth at 197. I'm excited for the both of them, 97 and heavyweight, because... They're, they still got two years left uh, each after this, and uh, I think they both could have a really good chance to be in the finals and maybe even champs after that. And then their last All-American, can't forget the 125-pound guy, Zach Orada, coming through with a fifth-place finish. So he replaces me as the last 125 All-American for Kearney. That's awesome. That's but fantastic. Go yeah. Lopes. Gotta love Nebraska Kearney. Congrats on the third-place team finish. Talk about historic program. You know, hey, 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 testing, test. Yep, and uh, now we're going to head into uh, our second place team, Nash runner up, Lander University. They were here last year, obviously, Lander University, coached by R.C. LaHaye and Chris Frazier. Uh, historically, They've done fantastic, I mean, in and, and a short amount of time, and, you know, we're excited for the future of that program. But um, they got a couple seniors, so they lose some guys, but uh, they do return some individuals. You know, Joplin returns, Lust returns, Peace returns, Huntsberger, obviously, but they do lose uh, Brower, Yacovetti, and Edmund Holmes, so three All-Americans. So I'm interested to see how they reload and, and get ready for uh, the 2025 season. Yeah, 100%. This is a super fun team. Uh, they're jumping levels every single year. Um, you know, they got second this year behind Central Oklahoma, but I know Central Oklahoma loses a couple of athletes, so, hey, maybe Lander could be fighting for a team title next year. It's a good possibility. I mean, when you return a returning champ, uh, a, a guy who took third and another guy took two-time all took sixth, and you have several qual qualifiers returning, too. It's a very good possibility. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's safe to say, though, Lander's going to, join schools kind of like central oklahoma st cloud and nebraska Kearney. you know they, i know they don't have any team titles yet but they're putting their name up there in the mix t to be top five year after year at this point you see a lot of spectators coming down to the floor tonight getting ready to take pictures with their loved ones and their friends and family and it's an awesome time for the sport of wrestling and i mean division two in general you know But next up, we're waiting on the national champions. The Broncos of UCO, coached by 
Todd Steidley. They have arguably won the most championships in Division II wrestling history. I mean, UNO I would say before them, and then uh, arguably now it's Central Oklahoma. I mean, I, I can remember growing up as a kid and, and knowing about the Broncos and knowing that they're a very historic program. Let's recap what uh, what they've done so far this season or this tournament. So, yeah, they, they've had a lot of All-Americans. They had seven total. Um, they had a couple people in the finalists. They walked away with two champs. Well, thank you all for tuning in on NCAA.com and Flow Wrestling. I'm Cy Wainwright, Josh Portillo. We hope to see you all next year, 2025 in Indy, following up with some more great wrestling and supporting Division Two. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.